Hello everybody and welcome back to some more Brood War. The CKW is continuing today with week 82. If you haven't seen this series yet before, there's already two other videos up on the channel, week 80 and week 81. This is a very special event hosted by a Chinese organizer who is uh, getting together some of the greatest Chinese players and pitting them up against some lesser known Korean stars, uh, up and coming pro players that uh, haven't really made an appearance in ASL or anything, uh, who might be gunning for the ACS, that type of caliber of player. And yeah, just brings us some great games. And thankfully one of the organizers sent us some of the replays. So we're getting the absolute honor of casting these today. Uh, we've got J-Star, Joseph J-Star down here in the bottom right-hand corner. And he's placing a Nexus, or not a Nexus, excuse me, a gateway in front of Jehovah's Witness. JW4040 is ready to take us to Bible school here today. Looks like he's going to get his gas stolen. He is the Korean player. And J-Star is the Chinese player. He's already being scouted here. Uh, unfortunately, because it's Protoss, you can just continue to harass with the probe. You can steal the gas all while building the gateway with your first Zealot. Is that OP or what? SCV would have to build the barracks outside your base. And if you sc scout it, you just lose because you're going to lose your SCV. And of course, the SCV is required. Stupid stupid human beings need their builders to keep working on their buildings as they're being created get with the times man produce your buildings just via light and stop working on them all the time now we're gonna respond to this with double barracks double barracks here in the main base and this is a great response to forward gateway pressure uh, generally you would go with this um, against a double gateway, but he's actually getting in here and trying to, uh, you know, pump out a whole bunch of Marines and then pressure down that gateway. That's the point of this. Now, the SCVs have put a, an amazing amount of damage onto this pylon. It's kind of crazy. We're getting in here with the Zealot. It's got zero kills so far. Trying to deal a little bit of damage, but every time a new Zealot pops out, he immediately comes back here and it goes for the pylon and look at this is gonna get the pylon are you kidding me well wow, this is kind of insane actually did he kill the probe i think he killed the probe oh my gosh that is really really sad uh old j star over there joseph j star is uh not gonna be too happy about that one let me tell you it's a forge behind this. He's going to build the cannon out in the front. It's a typical response as a Protoss player when you see the double marine, um, no, double barracks marine pressure. A double marine barracks play. Look at that. Pulling all the SCVs. He's just going to try and come across the map and kill J Star here. Now, the cannon is going to start. Go, go, build the cannon. Oh my god, he's not building it yet. There, he started it. But the, uh, oh my god, the SCVs are supposed to get in front of this and block. They're supposed to be blocking for the Marines and the, a lot of the Marines end up going down. He starts two cannons. He's gonna have to pull every probe. You pull all the probes here, right, J-Star? Come on, buddy. Bro, we have to survive this. All we need to do is get the cannons up and we are going to live. All right, here comes the SCVs. This is a crazy game, guys. Oh, great block there. Really great block and a good target immediately kill off one of those scvs he's starting to deal damage to the cannon he has to keep that alive the cannon is getting really low there's the second cannon finishing up the first cannon is probably going to go down right in a couple of seconds there it is though great hold here by j star and everything going to be forced back a lot of scvs were killed he's down to just 13 13 scvs he's got one heading back home remember how many scvs he pulled he has one SCV heading back home right now. This is a crippling loss for the Jehovah's Witness. Damn. Now he brought the whole congregation. Wasn't able to break through these cannons. A third cannon comes up. <laughs> oh, boy. 
J star. What are we doing? I guess he assumes that there's like no there's there's no way for his opponent to win at this point. Unless he just all in, so why not build a third cannon just to make sure that we can't possibly lose this one. And I think it's gonna be a Chinese victory, guys. That was a great hold. The way that JW killed the pylon here with just two SCVs. That was definitely a, a great play. Um, the way to counter that, obviously, is just to build another pylon. <laughs> but JSTAR failed to do that. So he completely messed up his build. Uh, luckily, though, upon building the Nexus, he immediately threw down that forge. It's the correct response when you see double uh, barracks. Like He's obviously going to have a lot of Marines, and Marines are the most garbage unit ever against cannons that are warped in. So once the cannons are there, they die so fast. That 20 damage is the perfect amount to just two-shot those Marines. So it's, uh, it's a rough situation here. We're still going to try and play it out, I guess. A probe makes its way around and sees the CC. So he knows he should go across the map with his Dragoons, try to put on some pressure. He's got infinite defense at his natural, so he really doesn't need anything. It's not like, like, four vultures just dies before they could even run by here, I think. This kills vultures and marines and everything so quickly, it's kind of insane. You have to get tanks. It's generally not a good idea to build this many cannons. Like, you'll never want to build this many cannons in a regular game. It's only this very specific scenario. That's just because they're expensive. They're as expensive as a gateway, and they don't allow you any pressure. Um, th to put any pressure onto the Terran player. The bunker's finishing right as range is finishing. A first tank is about to pop out, so it's not going to really take much damage on the bunker, it seems. But again, this is a insurmountable amount of uh, worker lead. It's crazy. Going to start to deal some damage on the bunker. Oh, he's going to go for the... Oh, but he missed the shot. He kind of messed up the micro there. The pacing in between his movement or his shots and his movement was a little bit off. You're, you got to run forward, take a shot, and then run forward again. But he moved forward, almost took the shot, and then tried to move forward again before the actual shots came out. The phase disruptors never left the barrel there. And these dragoons are not able to pick off that tank. Killing the tank would have been an instant win, I think. But, um,. Yeah, he's going to go for DT. Uh, you got to be cutting corners somewhere, right? Engineering bay here at the front. He's building a wall. So that's something. I'm um, going to come forward and try to kill the bunker. You actually can't get four SCVs on that because there's no surface area. Only two end up getting on there. And this is just getting worse and worse. JW. His front door is being knocked on. Not something he's used to. He's just going to have to hold his ground here with two tanks behind the wall and there's the DT how <laughs> he killed the SCV on the missile turret and that will die GG will have to be called here wait he's got a scan okay he kills it with the scan he starts plus one <laughs> I don't think that's what you need right now oh my god tanks going down this uh DT is gonna get right in the face here he's targeting as best he can on the dragoons and trying to get the surround on them but that DT is eventually gonna kill that tank and there it goes. Tanks are all dead. And JSTAR is just continuing to put on the pressure. He tries to surround and kill the DT with SCVs. The most limp dick citizen's arrest you've ever seen. It's like a bunch of, you know, Antifa people or, you know, whatever side you're talking about trying to arrest like a riot cop. Is our like Robocop here just one shotting everybody with his pistol as they're all trying to, you know, grab him? It's pretty brutal. Dark Templar just getting seven kills there at the end. Kind of a wild game, kind of a wacky game. I actually want to see if the probe ended up getting picked off. Let's go back and just take a look at this. Okay, let's see the probe. The probe. Yeah, he got it. Okay, he did kill the probe with the SCVs. That is funny. It's hard, man. It's hard to micro against the Zealots. 
uh, and control something else out on the map at the same time or at micro with the zealots and control something out on the map at the same time but it's equally hard to control the marines and control the scvs at the same time it is what it is a little bit outplayed there and had he just transitioned this into a normal game just kill the gas get the gas you know go into a um gasless fast expand i think he would have been okay honestly i think he would have been fine he could even, you know, come across the map and just just hold position with all of his marines out in front and make sure that no other bases come up so he can get his CC online about the same time as J Star. But he just decided to pull so many SCVs. He just went for it. Look, he's even ahead in that overall SCV count at this point. He's ahead in workers. He was in a very good spot, but he thought that he could just kill and it didn't end up working out. J Star gets taken down. And guys, I just want to let you know that these are all randomly selected matchups in round number one. And then in round number two, we're going to have King of the Hill format. So it's just like a regular pro league. Uh, and if both teams are tied at the end of two rounds, we will have a singular ace match. So look forward to that, guys. Next game, it's coming right up. Okay, game number two. We've got Xiao Shui here in the top center versus rich down in the bottom left you guys might know rich you definitely know Shao Shui. He is a player who has played a lot in the bsl and he has attempted to qualify for the asl and ssl several times he's gotten very very close he's probably the closest that we have to reaching that asl qualification which would be insane he is a chinese player rich is the korean and Rich is probably ACS material. I don't actually watch the ACS very regularly, so I'm not I'm not 100% sure on that. But um, he is a very very strong, capable player. Ladder Prodos. If you meet him on the ladder, you'll probably get bopped. He's like, he's got a lot of accounts, very high S rank. So there is a bit of a difference between playing. Uh, on the ladder at a high level and playing in tournament at a high level and one of the big factors is experience right you really need a lot of experience and this is really what this tournament is all about is providing that level of experience to chinese players but at the same time you're also providing a good amount of experience to these korean up-and-comers as well so we're going to have Xiao Shui open with an overpool. And there will be a forge expand here for Rich. Rich, who is ready to block the hatchery coming down over here at the natural. And will not be able to simultaneously bl block both bases. So a drone was sent out just in case he came to block this base. He could have taken this, but he ends up taking this instead as the probe heads back into the main. Let's see if I can change the colors here. Okay. I don't really like brown. Especially on this map. I don't know why brown is not banned because it looks so... It's so hard to see like whenever it's over this on the minimap. Uh, brown units are over this part on the minimap. It's so tough to see. And so we're going to switch to red and blue. Rich just getting everything online. And Shasha going to grab that gas. How are you guys doing today? Are you guys having a good time watching the... Uh, ASL, I know it's been rolling along here. Uh, everybody's kind of uh, checking that out right now. I know Tastosis casts are going very, very well this season. They're really ripping them off. So I've been enjoying it a lot. Um, kind of a, like this tournament, similar to this one, a lot of crazy games and uh, unexpected uh, just early wins for everybody a lot of crazy crazy cheesy nonsense and i don't know if that's like a, a trend in brood war right now or if that's just the early stages of the ssl but it feels feels wacky it, it feels like it's it's happening more and more recently um you kind of expect it out of these players because everyone is not so tight like everyone's not completely shorn up to the point where they know everything that can happen and 
you know, they're so experienced and uh, understand the game at such a deep level that they're not likely to die to something cheesy or crazy. But it feels like things are opening up again in those highest tournaments um, as though, you know, newer things are being found out all the time and the level of preparedness of the, the strongest players is not quite where we thought it was if you get my drift. Now, in this game, we had Xiao Shui take a really early gas. This was like a, a two minute 30 gas. And so he'll be afforded speed and spire. Like he's gonna get speed before spire. He's gonna put on a lot of pressure with these lings. And Rich has his zealots out in the front here. If those were to get caught, could very quickly devolve into a a really difficult situation. Now he's got his zealots in the wall though, being very careful. And this Ling Speed's not really gonna get Chao Chui anywhere, unfortunately. He's just gonna get his Spire going. There's the Stargate finishing up. He's gonna grab his extra hatcheries and start to, you know, drone as hard as possible with the knowledge that the, link, the uh, Zealots are gonna stay back. A second cannon on the way. Once that ca second cannon finishes, maybe we could see Rich move out, but it's still a bit risky. If you move out and then all the Lings run by into the main, you might kill like half of them, but the other half could really ruin your economy. And behind that, if Xiao Shui is making a bunch of Lings or even making a Sunken or two um, to defend against the Zealots going across the map, you could be in a lot of trouble. So he's just gonna stay back for now. He's gonna hold position in this wall and see what his Corsair can spot here for Xiao Shui. Now Xiao Shui for his part has done a great job of hiding his overlords around, putting them in places where you're unlikely to just wander into. Now he does spot this overlord, but it's a little bit too late. Zealots are moving out. His Lings are tracking their movements. Hydras are on the way it seems. Doesn't look like we actually want to build any mutas at all. And that could be a little bit painful here for Xiao Shui. Plus one's not quite done, so Ling defense is going to be helpful. And he turns around right now. That's kind of crazy. I thought that he would definitely go into that. If you tuck yourself in this position and start killing drones or fighting drones, um, it's pretty hard to clear that with Lings, but he falls back. He forced out a lot. He did force out some panic here from Xiao Shui, who built a good number of lings. And we're going to get all the way back home, potentially. Okay, nice job. That's a really good move from Xiao Shui. Okay, I am officially impressed. That was incredible. And he's even going to get around this and maybe catch that last zealot. All right, not barely not able to do that. But that was really good. Did you see the way that the zealots were walking down? Con conga lining down this ramp? And then he just butted into the line and surrounded half of the zealots at the top of the ramp. That was really, really good from Xiao Shui. It's super hard to surround and kill zealots when they're trying to run back home, but he did that impressively well and he gets himself a pretty sizable advantage because of it. The zealot number is way lower. We've only, you know, we've got the zealot on very low HP. A detail, detail, Detay? A DT is coming out. But the Overlord was just killed over at this third base. That's a little bit scary. I don't see an Overlord being produced here. And the DT is on the way. There it is. The DT. A Robocop here. The Terminator walking into this mineral line. And Xiao Shui is in a big trouble. <laughs> big trouble right now. Oh my goodness. He's going to take some serious damage. But meanwhile, at the front, he's actually going to try and push in here. He's going to hit an 8 minute 11 timing attack where the Templar just do not have any energy to repel this. Is he actually going to break through? It's really looking good here for Xiao Shui. I think the DT is just going to work those 6 kills on that now. Ravaging the mineral lines. This is still a solid win though for Xiao Shui. Okay, he killed it. He got it. Maybe a citizen's arrest there finally. Um, still very, very difficult to kill a DT with drones, but it seems like he might have done it with the assistance of a couple of Hydras. 
Here comes those zealots trying to fight this off. Rich is just about defeated here. All the cannons are gone and he leaves the game. Incredible moves here from Xiao Shuai. That was getting really scary with all the drones going down at the third base. That DT sneaking in, it was a great move from Rich, but he didn't expect the five hatch Hydra hitting at that perfect timing, that crisp little moment where you saw barely not enough energy on that first Templar that popped out and that DT was gone, right? The DT left and the te first Templar pops out. Usually you'll have two Templar and also you won't have energy. So maybe if he had uh, the second Templar here, you know, he might have been able to kill these, but the follow-up was definitely going to ruin him. The fact that all the cannons went down before the storm was ready is what really sank him in this game. Honestly, great performance from Xiao Shuai. Rich got kind of caught off guard here by how good Xiao Shuai was with his control and his early game movements. And a quick victory here for the Chinese squad. Bringing us to a tie. Xiao Shuai tying this series up so far. And I believe it is best of seven. Yes, best of seven. First to four for each of these rounds. We're going to jump into game number three. It's coming right up. Okay, game number three here with Mihu spawning in the bottom right hand corner and his opponent, HJS, or the Korean squad in the top right. Mihu is probably that other Chinese player that you've heard about before. A lot of hype around this guy. Uh, he seemed to be doing very well. He seemed to be, you know, dominating BSL and some other tournaments and maybe on the trajectory towards an ASL qualification, but just hasn't quite made it there yet. Still has some grinding to do, still has some practicing to do, and still needs more experience in the tournament format, the tournament setting, I think, before he can make that big leap forward uh, that's required to qualify and to, to make it into the largest tournament. The biggest, most... Maybe it's not the largest. Yeah, I, I guess I could say that's the largest. It's the most prominent tur tournament. Maybe more accurate um, in the entire world for Brood Warp. Uh, Mihu gonna drive away this drone to start. And we've got just a pretty standard build here from HJS. I didn't actually see the timing on that extractor, but I'm pretty sure everything's looking normal here. Let's see the timing on the layer. Uh, 303, 302, okay. I think if you do it at 303, I believe that's the number, you can actually get an extra larva, but I'll have to test that out again or, or take a research that again because I actually forget the exact timing on it. Uh, it's something to do with uh, right as the layer pops, right as the layer finishes, you get, an, you get an extra larva. So if a larva just popped out and then you get an extra larva, then you actually get the extra larva. If a larva was going to pop out anyway and then you get the extra larva, then it it doesn't really help you at all because you were going to get that anyway. So uh, it's something about the actual timing of when the next larva is going to pop out right before the larva fin or the, the layer finishes. So I don't know if that's going to affect this game at all. We've got HJS here going for a 2.5 hatchery build. He's actually thrown down the hatchery before the spire, which means the spire is going to be slightly late. You can see he doesn't have the money for that right now. Maybe a little bit of nerves here for HJS. Maybe that's part of his build order. Not entirely sure, but usually you want to have enough money right as the layer finishes to throw down the spire um, so that you're not you know, wasting any time. And then you throw down the hatchery as soon as you have the money for it. It's not really as much of an important structure, right? The timing on the third hatchery is not nearly as important as the timing on the spire. I think we can all agree with that. Ling's here. Going to see this. No, did they see that? Oh, I guess they didn't see the SCV there. 
just moving over to that side because he wants to make sure that the Marines aren't going to slip out. But this uh, SCV heading across the map, and he's going to get in here, I think, see everything. Unless the Overlord spots this and Lynx come up to catch it. Let's see if he actually sees this. Yeah, he does see the SCV, but he's not sending his Lynx back. He's instead getting prepared for this two racks play that's coming out of Mihu. Mihu's doing like the old standard two racks where you actually build the two racks inside your main and you don't build a wall. It's a little bit dangerous, uh, a little bit um, vulnerable to Ling run by though. And that's what we're going to have here from HGS. He's actually going to force all of the Marines back. And this little force, like pushing these Marines back, is actually so impactful. It's crazy. This little move from HGS just saved him from building, you know, more sunken colonies. He actually could have built no sunken colonies. And he would have been okay. Oh, he built so many Lings, though. Okay, that's not good. He built a bunch of Lings. Even though he forced the Marines back. Because he thought that uh, Mihu was just going to go. I think he just thought Mihu was going to go. Now he's going to try and trade with these. If the medic was actually with that army, uh, this would have gone a lot better for Mihu. But he lost a few Marines. He is going to get his turrets up on time. And, you know, he's going to get his four racks going. So he's not in such a bad way. But basically, those Lings would have just been throwaways if the the medics had actually been with this army stupid medics just walking into the mineral line like that pretty silly can hear artosis in the back of my he head right now screaming about the medics we've got mutas coming in now it's not as strong of a muta timing though because of that ling uh, aggression that we saw from hcs a moment ago he built all those lings in kind of a panic uh, thinking that he was going to counterattack, maybe kill a couple of SCVs, and that Mihu would just come for him. He needed the links to survive. But really, uh, not the case. Mihu actually going back home to deal with that. There was definitely enough time to build mutas. And he is going to build a lot more mutas to follow this up, but the, just the timing's not there, right? It was like 6 minute 50 when the mutas were getting over here to do some sort of harassment, so... It's a little bit rough here for HJS. He does have another base over in the top left, though. You know, he killed a few SCVs here and there. He's actually pretty much at parity with the number of workers here for Mihu. And, you know, he's, he's doing all right. He's going to add on the Queen's Nest and the Hydro Stand in the main base. Keep sharking around here, looking for damage that he can do, although there's not looking to be much. We've even got a extra missile turret here in the main mineral line because I think Mihu understands how dangerous this area right here can be. How painful it can be to have Mutas kind of camp over that spot. To dislodge them takes a lot of effort so he's added on some extra defenses and he's going to get into his star ports now. Uh, we're getting close to that point where the Zerg player kind of needs to sit back and just play defensively but we're not quite there yet. We're not at the uh, timing with uh, science vessels coming and irradiating everything. So, Mihu gonna tentatively push out here with eight HJS kind of poking him and prodding him and seeing if he can't p kill off this marine group before uh, it gets out of control. Maybe he can just kill off a couple more marines here and there, and then these Ling numbers can actually overwhelm this this force. Uh, I think that's might be what we're going to see here. Lurker aspect is just about done. And we have an armory on the way. I don't know about this armory right now. It feels like he's going to build some Valkyries and they're just going to get shut down because uh, he really needs science vessels right now. This is a beautiful surround here. Great job by HJS. Of course, good targeting as well by Mihu to pick off as many uh, Mutas as he can, but that loss is pretty huge. That is a massive loss of marine forces. And now HGS kind of has free roam. He can build a ton of drones. He's going to start his evolution chamber. Uh, he can just get this uh, base online. He could even try to take this base right now with uh, lurkers being produced at this base. And maybe a couple sunken colonies over here once uh, Mihu decides to move out. I keep seeing Xiao Ji 
and I think like uh, it's Xiao Shuai, but no, it's Mihu. Xiao Ji Shi Liao. I'm actually not sure what that means. I feel like I should know what that means. It's small G is Liao. I actually don't know what that is. It's been so long since I studied Chinese, guys. I've been studying a lot of Japanese recently. I'm trying to do at least five minutes a day. I'm keeping the bar really, really low. And <laughs> just trying to at least put in a little bit of effort every single day. So that's that's my goal right now. Um, or that's my, that's my strategy right now. My goal is actually to eventually be able to pass the exam necessary to get a five-year uh, spousal visa, which is... Not a high bar, but it's like you need a certain level of communication in order for the Japanese government to give you that uh, privilege of having the five-year visa. And then I won't have to go to the... Okay, nice move there. Wow. Then I won't have to go to the embassy every single year to get my, my stuff updated. My visa updated. These are some really good moves from Mihu. Man, he really he knows how to control Valkyrie. I thought that this was gonna do no damage, but this is actually gonna do something for sure. He's gonna get in here, kill all the Mutas. Oh my god, it's a slaughter. The Muta's getting absolutely wrecked. One Valkyrie does go down because that Valkyrie was kind of camping out over there, just kind of hanging, chilling. Wasn't really sure what he was gonna do. But uh now we've got drop ships on the way. Hydras are gonna pop out to push away these Valkyries, but. You know, we've opened up the skies. The skies are clear for the potential of dropships to come out here and deal some damage. Oh, a lot of Scourge, though. Oh, that was a mistake. He tried to do the micro, but oh my god, all the Scourge just die. Wow. Fourth base on the way here. Mihu, very impressive with this Valkyrie micro. Made one mistake. Oh my god, he's going to load up right in front of this one Ling. That Ling has seen some shit, boys. He has absolutely seen some things, and he's going to report back to HJS uh, about what he's seeing. And maybe we're going to have some Scourge pop out in time to actually stop this. The four dropships heading towards that main base. I think we're going to have the Scourge in time, though, in place to defend this. A lot of Lurkers being built here, too. Taking this very seriously. Fourth of four... Dropships are ready, and the fourth is probably the prime location to attack. There's hardly anything over here. No Scourge. Oh my god, the Scourge. Oh. Where did those come from? Two of the dropships go down immediately. A great play here by HJS, picking those both off. And now this is looking pretty rough for Mihu. Really needed to deal some damage with that. That's a lot of supply up in those dropships. Uh, and hardly anything to show for it. He's going to be switching into vessels now. But, I mean, everything is locked down. And the irradiates are so late. We're going to have plague before irradiates get over here. And so, you know, things are starting to spiral out of control a little bit. These Valkyries got 13 and 9 kills. Holy crap. That's a lot of kills. Science vessels are here. Can he go over into this base and actually deal some damage? Uh, I'm not so sure. I feel like this is probably not going to go well for... Uh, for Mihu, but he's got to try something. He's got to give it his... Give it a best shot here. He's checking things out. He takes a look inside the base. Okay, he sees some uh, an opening here. He can definitely drop. Oh boy, he's going to lose that. Oh, okay, never mind. That was a great D-Matrix. He was expecting the... He was expecting that um, pair of Scourge to actually go after his dropship. So he dematrixes that. And now he's going to be able to drop here in the back. The Lurkers are coming out, but they're actually stuck. The ramp is stuck. Oh my god, HGS, get up that ramp. Oh man, everything gets unloaded behind the... Uh, over here behind this um, mineral line. But wow, the links just come through and clear everything out. Dude, HJS is going to clear this completely. And yeah, ouch. That did not go well for Mihu. Mihu going to try to drop in here again. Let's see if he can get any damage with the secondary drop. Um, it's looking really doomed here for Mihu if he actually can't do anything. Oh, he gets the... Uh, that's a good move. 
running forward here and gunning down that defiler is actually going to help him out quite a lot. He really doesn't need to target that. He needs to target this, but maybe he gets in here with some more drops. Okay, another round of dropships coming out. There's a defiler coming up, though. Dark Storm on top. It's going to force the Marines to run. And now we've got a Lurker in the mix. Lurker is dealing some damage as well. There's the Plague. Some of these units are going to go down, but he really needs to target the Hatchery. Something else going on on the map for Mihu, I guess. He's trying to macro at the same time as doing all these moves. It's pretty tough. HGS is probably going to end up holding. He's going to go behind the Mineral Patches, still being annoying here. And setting himself up for the next phase. The next phase of his attack going to be flying in with these... Irradiated Science Vessels try to get as many kills with the Eraser Trick as possible. That's a lot of kills. Oh my goodness. That's like all the drones that were at either of these bases. I think we're going to go for the Natural here and try to break through this position at the same time. Another drop coming up onto the high ground. He is definitely going to continue this attack. Oh boy. What are we doing with this? Oh man. Oh... Oh, okay. He's going to lose both of these. That is unfortunate. Going after the Defilers. He gets both the Defilers. Oh, my goodness. HGS is having a hard time. Every time he loses a Defiler, things are getting a little bit more difficult for him. Drones are probably going to end up going down here. Yeah, quite a few of them are. And another Eraser Trick over here at the third base. Just trying to make it as crazy as possible. He's actually killing Overlords with the Eraser. You don't get to see that every day. But he's doing quite a bit of damage. Now a drop over here at the natural. Is Mihu going to be able to take this game? Is really putting the pressure onto HJS uh, here. Killing off so many drones. And he's going to drop into the main too. Ultras are finally out. But they're not doing so good. Uh, they're going to have a hard time getting back here. Uh, into this corner. And Shao Shui, uh, not Shao Shui. Mihu is just going to abuse this position so, so much. You can see he should be targeting down drones right now. Uh, the Ultras can't actually reach that. They're going to take forever to kill the Ultras. So if you just start spamming down drones, you're going to get way more damage. But it's fine. A Lurker comes back here, clears that out. HGS sort of, almost, kind of going to stabilize here. Oh my goodness, he's got almost no drones. 37 workers is all he's managed to put together. And Mihu has his third base up. He's going to go ahead and take a fourth. He's adding bunkers everywhere. And the pittance of ultras that HJS has managed to accumulate is probably just going to end up going down here. It's probably just going to get overwhelmed. Let's see the upgrades right now. Two to four. Okay. Even on the upgrades. Some Radiants need to go down here on some of these Defilers. Very important that he got those. But a big plague on all this. Oh my goodness. Can I change the color? Okay, that's better. We can see the plague now. Everything getting plagued here and forced back. HJS. Killing off quite a few Marines. But the bulk of the economy and the, the production is very good. For Mihu right now. Oh, these bunkers are empty. Okay, that bunker is empty. This one's actually full. Uh, gotta get a repair on that. He will get the repair. Another Dark Swarm here. Scourge gonna come in and get as much damage as they can. Try to pick off some of these vessels. Pretty good target fire there to pick off one of those vessels. But here comes more Lurkers. You're gonna have to abandon this position, Mihu. No choice about it. Um, not enough for Radiates here. And SCVs are being transferred over to that fourth. All right, it's going to come forward. The Defiler is here, but it doesn't have energy. It just needs to go ahead and consume some of these Lings. Okay, Marine's going to come running up, but they can't actually get on top of this. And everything is going to be forced back. This is a brutal shutdown here. And I think HAS may actually win this. He survived the onslaught of Mihu. Mihu doing everything he could to make... Uh, this Korean player's, this Korean Zerg's life a living hell during the last few minutes. But now that he's kind of pushed back into his natural, he's running out of steam. He's being shoved all the way back and he's lost control of his third. His fourth is up in mining, but he doesn't have any map control to stop more defilers coming across. 
and dealing more damage. Oh, the drop, I think that just loaded up and got sent out and immediately gets shut down in the natural. HJS, he just needs to hold this position until a Defiler comes. Where's the Defiler? There are three coming across the map right now. There's another one in the middle. That's just been forgotten about. If that was here right now, it's probably GG. More Ultras coming. They're actually going to be sent down here. There's only two Marines in the bunker. Oh my gosh, he needs to surround on that. I mean, it's not going to hold on for very long, but... We have to keep this base alive right now. Okay, well, that base is going to get shut down. The natural is going to get shut down. Everything is getting wrecked here for Mihu. He's got no money left uh, in his natural. And HJS is going to take this one home. We do have plus three on the uh, the attack upgrades here for Mihu. But with the plus five armor. Still going to be taking very nice trades here with the ultras. And more ultras coming into the natural. Mihu. Has quite a bit of gas, but he just doesn't have anywhere to spend it. He's trying to build up his marine force. He's got quite a bit of barracks, but he's just getting run down here in his own natural. We're going to see a plague, maybe. Dark Swarm. There's a plague on high ground. There's the opportunity. Is he going to cast it? Probably not. He's basically got this one. He just needs to push in. Mihu is going to have to tap out. Man. A rough series of events here. It felt like Mihu was actually going to overwhelm, and there it is. It felt like he was pretty much overwhelming everything. Oh, some sort of vessel, or maybe a dropship went down here. Not really particularly impactful, though. Mihu trying some things, but without any money incoming, he's only got 24 minerals. There's really nothing he can do in this stuff in his base. Wow, 8 HP. How did that happen? What was there up here? I'm actually curious now. I wonder what that was. Some sort of drop, maybe? Or... What was this? Uh, Battlecruiser? Oh, there was Battlecruisers. Okay, he made Battlecruisers and he brought them up here. Killed a bunch of drones and he almost killed the hatch. Kind of missed out on that because this was so much more important. This was basically the killing blow here. And stopping this from mining is also uh, really the killing blow. This whole series of events here being undeniably uh, horrible for Mihu. Just getting over or just getting overwhelmed. HGS played a heck of a game though, a heck of a defense uh, versus all of that aggression. Uh, it was looking kind of bad when he lost everything to those Valkyries, but. Uh, the snipes on the two dropships over here was hugely impactful. The man, the, the, like, think about it. He lost those, and then he almost broke this base. Mihu did. He almost broke this base. If he had four drops, he drops all those units into this base, and then he comes back out, and he could pick up way more and drop, dump it into this base, he probably would have shut this down. But because he only had two drops, he was ferrying less units in, and he had less units because he lost a bunch of units over here. HJS was just barely able to hold on. Just barely able. And because of that, with the four gases and the ultralists start to come out, he manages to take this one home. We're going to jump into our next game. A win on the board here for the Korean squad. All right, next up, we've got Yoon versus Xiaogu. Xiaogu over here in the top left-hand corner. Little big brother. And down here in the bottom left, Yoon. He's going to be representing the Korean squad. And he's opened up with a pretty aggressive um, spawning pool. I guess this is an overpool. So not as aggressive as I was thinking. But it's all been spotted here by Shogugo, who's uh, getting kind of tracked down with this probe. Doing a good job putting some damage on that. Getting the moving shot. Ooh, Yoon. Really spam clicking here. In the movement. Oh, the movement is very good. Okay, Yoon is going to head towards the natural. It's time to take that hatchery. And he's put enough damage on that probe. He's brought it to about half HP, which is good enough here. Um, the shields, of course, will recharge, but 
As those lings pop out, they're going to have an easier time getting rid of it. Only one set of lings and mostly drones on the way. The Overlord has spotted that it is indeed a forge opener. And so he has nothing to fear. Just need to pull that Overlord back before the cannon finishes, and I'm sure he will do. Oh, trying to slow this down. He's hitting stop position. You can see Shao Guga trying to slow down those lings that are coming. Uh, what are we doing? Okay, there we go. Overlord starts to move. <laughs> Let's get a little afraid there for a second. It's something that's happened to me before. You just kind of forget sometimes that you actually need to move that darn thing. Oh, wait a second. Lings are actually going to run by. That is a big move. He gets a probe already and will make his way up into the main. Yoon with two lings in the main. Running past that cannon. Pretty big move here. And... Yeah, if you lose that first Overlord, you might as well actually just leave the game. It's so bad. It is so, so bad. It's happened to me. I'm not saying it happened to me all the time, but it happened to me a couple of times in the past, and it is a really bad situation. Now, this is probably almost as bad, almost equally as bad here for Shao Guga is the fact that we've got uh, two Lings running around, and they're already doing... Quite a bit of damage. We've got one kill so far, but all the lost mining time here is very significant. He's forcing these probes off the line for a crazy amount of time and struggling to track these down. Now, one more overload flies in. Oh my god, that was close. Two more hits. That would have been dead. That was really, really close. Yoon paying attention to his lings a little bit too much there and ends up almost losing an overlord. Back at home, he is making drones. He's got his lair on the way. Would have been horrible had he uh, lost that overlord. He would have been supply blocked for a crazy amount of time. Another probe goes down, so two probes overall have been killed. And this zealot will make its way over to the third. Yun just kind of not mining here for now. And so it's going to wander in and maybe tuck itself. I guess there's no real spot for him to tuck himself. Oh, wow. He gets a drone there. A lot of sloppiness in this game. Got to pull it together here. Yun going to take a pretty good fight against this zealot. Looks like he finally did lose the Ling. Yeah, <laughs> these two probes just sitting up here. Oh, my gosh. Well, this isn't the best showing from either of these players so far. This is, um, <laughs> this is pretty bad. Oh, man. Still dealing damage with those lings right now. Their ghosts are roaming the, the main base still, forcing probes off the line. I wonder how long these are going to sit there. Okay, finally they need to go back to mining. That is, um, <clears throat> yeah, that's a little bit rough. Zealot about to pop out. We're going to pull probes here for a moment to make sure that no more links can run by. Link speed could be done soon. I guess it is done, in fact. Oh, these links are running pretty quickly around the map. He's actually checking to make sure there's no Zealot kind of hiding out anywhere, and then he will turn his attention towards that natural. Spire is done. First Corsair is just about out here, but things were delayed pretty heavily in the main base, so... As that first Corsair pops out, we're already going to have Scourge on the field. Got to be very careful here as Shao Guga to make sure that we don't have those Scourge just fly directly into that first Corsair. Let's go ahead and watch this guy cross the map and see if he ends up getting caught here because uh, if you're smart as a Zerg player, you can just predict exactly where that's going to that's gonna head and you can head it off and pick it off. Uh, immediately now the the scourge have kind of gone around this they're gonna spot it now and the scourge are gonna start to come back uh with some good control you can head this off it looks like some of the scourge are heading around the back side these two are gonna head back to this base i guess he's not able to find it unfortunately he's looking for a secondary corsair but none are being built so that's an important scout you see no more corsairs on the way oh there's one back here actually he's kind of hiding like a little rat in the corner there does end up getting picked off in the end overlord over here is going to be under threat and if i'm zerg in this position i would be making needleless but we're actually going to see a hydralis flood 
coming from our Zerg player, Yoon. And yeah, he's gonna maybe track this down. Oh, gets it again. Beautifully done. Uh, yeah, I would say make making Vitas would be great. <laughs> <laughs> it is, is great. Two Corsairs have already gone down, and you saw that he wasn't making any more. Why would we not want to build m some mutas and just go kill the main? I feel like that is a no-brainer here at this point, but Yoon has different plans. He's going to make a lot of Hydras in preparation for this Zealot move out. Let's see where this game goes. Uh, after con all that good control with the Scourge, generally you want to take advantage, but... Um, there's not even extra cannons being built on main. Dude, Chao is really playing it risky here. Not building extra cannons or anything. Oh gosh, he's got four cannons in the natural. That's a lot of hydras though. We have storm. It's just about done. We've got one storm. We've got one Templar available. Okay, that was kind of a whiff. A little bit unfortunate there. There is a DT out in the front. That DT is actually going to shut a lot of this down. Yeah, that DT is going to do a lot of work. Okay, there's the overload speed though. Got one more storm here in about uh, uh, just a few seconds. The cannons are so far back, though. The wall is just going to be sacrificial. Nothing he can do to save that. More zealots are going to pop out. Another DT coming. Two more Templar on the way as the wall goes down. It's going to be a close hold here. Let's see if he can keep things alive. A lot of dodging back and forth right now. A lot of dodging back and forth right now. He's trying to bait out the storm. He does bait the storm and dodges it successfully. So this is some good, strong play from Yoon. And the early advantage is starting to spiral here. We're getting to the point where Chagaga might not have much of a chance of coming back in this game. There's, you know, 42 drones. There's about to be four more on the field. Six Hatch Hydra is in full swing. We've got no Corsairs. We have no ability to deal counter damage. We're going to go ahead and get Maelstrom because we're afraid of the potential for some Mutas coming out. And I understand exactly why he would be afraid of that. I personally would have definitely gone for Mutas in this position, but Yoon is just content. Oh, there it is. Nine Hydras. There it is. Going to send in the Overlord. He sees the Dark Archon. That's actually kind of a big scout. He sees that. He knows about it. He knows the timing on when it's finished. So he knows when there's going to be some Maelstrom available. And he has 11 meters on the way. Um, let's see if we can get a big Maelstrom here and turn the tides. I don't think it's likely, but it is possible. I was going to try to make them move towards the north. But Hydras are going to mirror them. I'm going to send three Zealots out this way. Two zealots out this way and try to find some purchase on the map. Looks like these three zealots will escape. More hydras being made at home. Where are those mutas? They're going to come in here now. He's going to send in just four mutas to try and bait the uh, maelstrom, but there's no maelstrom available yet. Okay, five hydra or five mutas, excuse me, to start killing probes one by one. The Maelstrom is just not there. We, we've only got five more seconds until it's ready. But this is not the bulk of the mutas. The rest are just sitting over here. So he's trying to bait this. He wants he wants him to Maelstrom. He, he wants him to do it. Like a drone comes down here and tries to take that base. He will eventually get that going. The mutas are over here. Oh my goodness. He's controlling two muta groups at the same time. Being so annoying. All the probes get pulled to the natural. And where is that? Maelstrom. Oh man, this is pretty annoying. Looks like the drone actually got picked off down here, so that's kind of a good, um, good pickup. Slowing down the fourth base for a little bit, but still, the Shaguga's economy is in complete tatters. This is a catastrophe right now. There's the Maelstrom finally getting thrown down. He kills his own Templar with the storm. Oh man. Oh boy, Shagaga. Please, dude. We need to be so efficient right now. But he's kind of failing in that objective. Another cannon gonna warp in. Looks like this Overlord's days are numbered. That gets picked off. Lurker aspect on the way. Time to take a third base. For sure we need this third base up. 
I don't think we're going to be able to come across the map and end this anytime soon. Building into a huge dragoon count. I'm going to come in once again. Not enough uh, energy for a maelstrom. A lot of probes going down. A lot of dragoons here to answer, though. Five lurkers on the way. Yuna's getting prepped back at home for this upcoming attack. He knows it's going to be coming soon, and he's got plus two finished. Just in time for this to come across. We've got 1-1. One, one. No extra upgrades on the way. He's just going to go with 1-1 one, one and see what he can do. It's a pretty big force of Hydra and Muta. Let's head it out on the map. This is so much supply, dude. He's 20 supply ahead. Oh my goodness. This is a bit of a bop. Yoon is incredibly far ahead right now. And that's all due to his control, really. His control has been fantastic. Uh, also, the early game run by was a major factor in this game. Slowing down uh, Xiao Gugu a lot. There goes the first Templar, kind of leading the charge uh, out into the map and ends up getting completely snuffed out. This army going to come from behind. Lurkers in the front. We have a Maelstrom. That's a pretty decent Maelstrom. You can't hate on it. That was a pretty good one. Where's the storm to follow it up? There it is. That was lying on quite a few Hydras, but he manages to get out. That storm was a little bit slow. Gotta bring this Dark Archon back. Don't want to just throw that away. You need to get value, like I said, with all of these units. He does end up throwing that away, so it, it's gone now. But he's going to try to make a move down towards the bottom right, it seems. Is Yun going to be ready for this? Quite a few lurkers moving over in this direction. And I, I just don't see how we could ever see a bust. How is he going to get through any of this? I mean, maybe he can like run some zealots through this way. And just run around the army here. Um, and then force you know, reinforcements into some storms. But oh my goodness. They get the big wide view here of Hydras coming from the right hand side. Lurkers and Hydras coming from the right hand side as well. Where's the observer? I just don't see it. Okay, there it is. Observer there uh, is helping this out. Pretty decent storms, but the number of units is way too much. Everything getting locked down into this corner, and the dragoons are going down. Yoon, complete surround here on this Protoss army. The blue blood littering the battlefield here as Zerg proclaims a victory. Another win on the board for the Korean squad. Bringing us to a tied match. Two to two as we jump into game number five. All right, we're getting the run back of HJS versus Mihu. JS here in the top left hand corner or bottom left hand corner excuse me and Mihu down here in the bottom right let's change these colors they're way too similar look at that what you call that white versus pale pink or something like that that's a bit better unfortunately we're gonna get red Terran so if we get plagues this game it'll be a little bit harder to see but at least we'll be able to tell the difference between the two players so we'll have to go with the lesser of two evils here I'm really glad that we're getting this run back. This was probably the most fun match that we've seen today. Mihu versus HJS. There was a lot of action in that. Uh, the first match between these two guys. And here on Retro, I expect some fireworks. Let's see what... Oh, eight racks. I was going to say what Mew has in store for us, but an eight racks coming out right away. He's going to go ahead and follow it up with a supply depot beside it. Or right here, I guess. So that he can create that wall in a little bit later. And the Overlord is heading in his direction. Looks like it's not going to get there quite in time for HGS to switch over to a sudden uh, spawning pool. But at least he won't build any more drones. He will get that 12 hatch going and then he shouldn't produce anything more he's just going to uh, see that supply depot and he doesn't see the barracks just yet but he'll see it here in a moment 
that he knows exactly what he's up against. So saving that money, he's going to throw down his spawning pool immediately. And let's see how many drones he pulls to defend this. Is he going to do like an action, uh, you know, sunken hold? Or is he going to pull a whole bunch of drones like a, a soul key or something like that? Um, we've seen many different ideas about how to hold the eight racks. Uh, as it did hit like a popularity spike in the last year, especially 2023, it was pretty strong. A lot of players were going with the eight racks. And so there's been different schools of thought about how to deal with this. HGS is going to pull just five drones, three more on the way. So the standard eight is where he's going to land. And just running by can be a good option as well. Oh, he's going to dive on top of this. I thought he was just going to go for the run by, but he actually dives on it. And that does not go well for HJS. He finishes his spawning pool, so Lynx will be on the way. A lot of times I like to run by and then get in the path of the Marines. And then you can bring the drones and the Lynx together a little bit later on. Oh, that is horrible. He loses that drone. It was trying to run by and join the rest of his brothers. And dude, this is getting really bad now. He's not using... a. Uh, click on he should be clicking on this geyser he's lost way too many drones dude me who's gonna win this you straight up going to win this i mean a lot of these uh, marines go down okay wow all, all the marines go down before the bunker finishes but this is already too much damage i think the bunker would have been the killing blow probably if that had gotten up and all four marines inside it would have been a hundred percent over there's still a little bit of play here for hgs but it is really looking rough oh boy how do you ever come back from something like this he's produced so many lings like he's got he's must have produced 10 lings and he's got seven drones to the 19 scvs he's making four lings he's just gonna go for the kill it's not gonna end up working out though i don't think me who He's building a second barracks in his wall, so he doesn't even have to waste build time on lifting and landing here. So, kind of a smart play, honestly, from Mihu. I like that a lot. Uh, lifting and landing here, it, it does cut down your marine build time a little bit. You're not going to have as many marines when this all-in comes. But since he uh, pulls puts this in the wall, he's got a really nice little tiny hole uh, to fight from. And here comes those lings. Oh my god, so many lings. Oh, he's got to plug the hole. What is he doing? Okay, he tries to pull the marine forward. Unfortunately, one marine is actually accessible on this side, even though that's not an opening for the lings to get through. SCVs are being brought down to the front. The surround with the SCVs is pretty good. One last marine. It goes down. SCVs are being pulled here. He has to kill so many SCVs to make this worth it. So many SCVs have to go down. There's still 18 left and only seven drones. That is wild. So he is going to be able to hold. And yeah, Mihu going to probably win this game now. He is starting to hit you know, the supply depot and the SCV. But the barracks is going to float back. A secondary bunker gets finished. And so he will be able to hold. Oh my goodness. So many lings were made. And he's still just building lings. Nothing more to it. Nothing more to this build. HJS is all in. And he's either going to win or lose off of this play. He's going in. Let's see if he can kill the supply depot. He's just going to go after the supply as quickly as he can. The supply depot is getting very low. It will go down. The SCVs are going to have to block here. Getting us around on the bunker is the next big issue here. Oh my god. He's going to try and run by now. And a perfect pull here from Mihu to try and block that from occurring. Very nicely done. And only a few links make it into the main. We are going to continue to produce links and just try to overwhelm this bunker. Maybe he can create enough of a distraction here in the main to where he can actually come in and kill this. Okay, here we go. Oh, go for the bunker. No, 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 no. What are we doing? Just going to run by into the main as well. Okay, that's kind of insane. Um, still eight drones remain and link speed is on the way. More and more links are being made. Yeah, he's only got eight drones mining. He's gonna, like, he kind of wasted this distraction, honestly. The distraction here in the main with only two Marines in the bunker, he could have killed that and then opened up the position pretty heavily. Now, I mean, we just need to build a building here. That's it. All we need is a supply depot at the front. 
and this game is over. I mean, it's already pretty over, but especially with medics popping out, there's just no way you can break this. I don't think he started Stim. He might be starting that soon. He's actually getting an eBay because he's afraid that he's getting double, double commsat is pretty crazy. Do we really think that he's got um, mutas on the way? How many drones did we kill? And he, how many links did he make? I doubt that there's going to be mutas here, Mew. Oh, but a move out like that could really, really hurt him. Oh, he's getting on top of this. The SCVs are going to be pulled at the end of this fight, but quite a few of the Marines go down. However, that was everything that HGS has been building up to. He just had nothing behind it whatsoever. And unfortunately, we're going to get a win here. Uh, off of a very early game eight racks or very early game uh, decider right couple of all-ins or not all in uh, for the eight racks eight racks is kind of like what protoss players always complain about with hydra bust right oh it's like an all-in but uh you can easily trend you can easily um transition out of it and still play a normal game yeah that's eight racks for you you just it, you can just die and it's a lot of commitment from the Terran, but all you need to do is just fall back to a wall and boom, you're completely safe. There's no counter play, really. Um, you can see that from HGS here. He tried to all in after and there really wasn't any way to make that work. As long as uh, Mihu just keeps making uh, Marines and, you know, pulls his SCVs at the right time, uh, you you're just going to fail. Um, the big, nice... Uh, decision that I thought that me who made this game was uh, different than pretty much any other Terran player I've seen is building this barracks right here rather than floating this one back to the wall and building the second barracks here keeping the production s close to each other and building off of this the entire time just keeping that production going meant that he had just enough Marines to hold off that attack very well played by him uh, having just like an extra SCV at the wall would have made a world of difference, you know, not poking out with the Marines as well, just keeping them in this little channel here. Also not putting a Marine right next to this corner where it can actually be hit. Although the Ling can't get through there, it can actually hit over this wall and he ended up losing a Marine like that. There's a few mistakes here and there, but I really thought overall that that idea was a very good one and it ended up making a big difference in this game. Now we're going to jump into another game here it's china leading in round number one over korea three to two see that next game match point in this game with rich spawning in the top right hand corner xiao shui in the bottom right only one more win xiao shui pulls it off a round one victory for china will be had and if rich manages to take this game we'll go to a final match to see who wins this best of seven, this first best of seven. We've got two best of sevens plus potentially a ace match in this week of the China Korea Star League, the CKW guys. Thanks for joining me uh, in this tournament, this a very little known tournament that's been going on for a long time. You know, we're in week 82 and we've just, I've just kind of picked up on it. I know a lot of you probably have never heard of it before, um, but it has been going on for a long time. And we're just getting our first ever English cast of some of these games. So that's cause for celebration in my mind. Shout outs to the Chinese organizers of this tournament we're putting together something fantastic and allowing us to watch it as well allowing us to uh, have these replays it's a big deal doesn't happen very often a lot of the korean tournaments and uh you know korean events are kind of gate kept by people who are not willing to share the replays and that is uh not a great thing honestly for the starcraft community especially the english community which is uh substantially smaller than the south korean i mean it's it is what it is boys we are a far larger population of uh, potential players and potential viewers but a far smaller percentage of actual viewership of these south korean games of these 
uh, StarCraft events. So uh, I'm hoping to turn that around. I'm hoping that we'll get uh, more viewership in the future as more and more crummy games come out and more and more people realize what a beautiful, spectacular, and interesting game that this truly is, Brood War. Such an experience and so much nostalgia around this game. Uh, I really do feel like it deserves a huge amount of attention. Uh, not just in South Korea, but abroad as well. And we're working on that goal slowly over time. So stick with us. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. And uh, you can join me on this journey. If you want to support, Patreon links in the description as well. Or just share it with your friends. You know, like the video, all that good stuff. Everything helps. And I'll continue to do this. Uh, for the foreseeable future we've got the layer coming up here the third base was forced to be taken first here for Xiao Shuai. no Ling run by this time so Rich is getting off uh, with a much better start uh, compared to their previous game where Xiao Shuai got in with two Lings and just kind of messed up the economy uh, this time Rich is kind of able to play his game a little bit more and he is a gamer man he is a very competent Protoss player he's had a lot of great matches against some of the best Korean pros in the world and put up good fights against them and so I wouldn't expect anything less uh, from this guy now he's gonna tuck this first zealot behind in this little corner unfortunately Xiao Shui not able to get the greatest trade against that he loses two links but that's pretty reasonable two links for a zealot that's 50 minerals uh, for 100. Uh, the only problem is that, of course, you had to use larva for that, and that's not a drone. Whereas the uh, uh, Nexus are constantly pumping out probes. And as you can see, a little bit of a probe advantage. That's normal. Um, you have to kind of do these things to force out more attacking units for our reserve player. Um, in order to just limit that economy a little bit, you can't allow the Zerg to be just growing unhindered. So we're going to get a Corsair coming across now. He's going to look for an Overlord. Once again, Xiao Shui very good at hiding his Overlords, placing them in random locations around the map. And it seems like he will not be losing any Overlords to this initial Corsair. Uh, we have the... Spire finishing, and as soon as that's done, oh, maybe he'll see this one in time. Uh, maybe not. Oh man, really good hiding here from Shaw There we go. He finds the one overlord. Uh, we have Scourge started now, so actually, this will get that one kill. Not bad. I think that uh, Rich is going to be pretty happy with that. Shaw Shui not going to be too miffed. Uh, he's not going to get supply block. He's got four overlords on the way make sure that that doesn't happen right as that one dies he does get slightly supply block for a moment but immediately two more are going to pop out i think did one more go down was there one over by the okay there was one over here so he lost two overlords kind of missed that one overlord over on this side does end up getting picked off and this time the corsairs will live so we've got four corsairs hiding over here underneath the production panel and some zealots heading out to begin to harass again. Xiao Shui sticking with his guns. Hydralisk production is the name of the game here for him. He's going to start his pneumatized carapace. That overlord speed rolling. And we are going to have more and more Corsairs being built. So he's continuing with that Corsair production. Last time he kind of gave up on it after he lost his first couple of Corsairs, but this time he's going to go out in force and try to take some map control. Now, Xiao Shui, he's already got plenty of Hydras to defend against any sort of uh, Corsair aggression. And if he continues to produce Hydras, we might see him go for another timing attack. We might see another five hatch Hydra attack into the natural, and it can be so deadly it's really a strong play. He's going to catch, I think, these overlords as they're leaving. No, he only sees one in the natural. Is he going to come into the third base? That's going to be spotted uh, by this overlord. One drone, two drones. 
is all he's going to get some more drones on the way so he's actually just gonna pressure and then oh he gets a templar whoa that's a big snipe a really big snipe here he's gonna go after this cannon oh he can't quite get the cannon if he got that cannon he could actually kill the uh, forge which would be a huge deal plus one is already done but still pretty annoying to lose a forge I'm gonna have to rebuild that and start another upgrade in the main and by that time you know plus two will already be on the way here for Shao Shui. Okay, plus one armor on the way. I think if you run up here and just gun that down, I think you can get the forge. He's actually a little bit busy right now dealing with uh, these Corsairs roaming his base. He's trying to get some overlords out. Yeah, he's going to go for that. No. Okay, I'm a little bit, a little bit surprised about this. Zealots are going to come out now. And yeah, he does need to run away. Oh, the catch on these Hydras is sick. And the Corsair is being thrown in there as well means that he's gonna lose overlords all three of the overlords are gonna go down shao shui in a bit of hurt right now he's not building anything he really needs to get these uh, hatcheries to start producing he's got ventral sacks interesting overlord drop on the way shao shui gonna get a little bit tricky is this zealot or is this shao shui guy i mean he looks like zealot right now with this type of play being very tricky and he's going for drop really early on uh, and he's probably gonna mess up rich with this oh that's way too many hydras yeah this is a fool's errand I'm gonna try and dive in here the zealots get wrecked and the corsairs get pushed back that was not the right play right now shao shui he wanted to catch shao shui kind of over droning he's managed to get the drones out but he's got way too many hydras uh, to fight like that seven lurkers on the way right now and we're gonna have a big drop into the main i think that's what we're gonna we're gonna get in a moment we might even have that combined with a lurker drop in the natural at the same time it would be sick really really sick move and i think that's what we're gonna get out of xiao shui in this game he's not interested in just playing it out normally okay templar moving out but we don't have observer that's for sure yeah you can't move out against this that's not gonna be a possibility I have to pay very close attention here see if i can pick up on when the drops are actually coming in and where they're actually going there's two lurkers um he's sending it in this direction i'm not surprised about that okay there's another two lurkers okay he's gonna go for a drop at the main and the natural at the same time i believe lurkers getting set up here at the front Pushing in a little bit. He's got the plus two done. No, he doesn't have plus two. Okay, plus two just started. I'm a little bit surprised about that, but he's going to fight these zealots. Going back the hide just now. Here comes the drop. Drop into the uh, natural. Pushing back all of these probes. First observer pops out. And he's going to be focused on that while the drop into the main happens. All right, pretty good juggling so far by Rich. He's dodging all of this. And he won't take as much damage as you might expect. However, Hydras are going to make their way over here to the third while all this is happening. And he loses a Templar before he can cast any storms. He loses the cannons before he can cast any storms, which is the big main part. Oh my god, Rich just fell apart. He let all the Hydras get on top of this third base without casting any storms here he was too busy dealing with this lurker in the main and the lurkers over at the natural and xiao shui just spread him a little bit too thin everything has fallen here no templar in this main okay he's got one here one templar in the natural but xiao shui is running away with this game he can do whatever he wants now and it looks like what he wants is going to be that contain Overlord's going to be sent over here to prevent a bust out. We're probably going to have to kill our own forge to make any headway here. Because breaking out of this position is so tough. Now, there is another option. You could go back here and kill this and then rally everything through the back. And you might... Okay, we might be able to break out that direction if the Zerg doesn't pick up on it too quickly. We've got some more Hydras and Lurkers being picked up. Looks like the Corsairs will fall. Oh, oh, seven HP. 
does survive. 10 more Hydras on the way. Fourth base coming up. He's sticking on that layer tech as expected. Server getting picked off. Nice little snipe there. And these overlords gonna go for the main while uh, Rich is trying to break out. Pretty smart move here from Xiao Shuai. Again, just taxing the multitasking here for the Korean Protoss player. More storms going out, but at the same time, we're gonna have that drop landing. The lurkers here gonna run up and burrow. How many probes can they kill? During this chaos, he's going to lose quite a few. Down to just 39. But can he actually get out of this location? I don't think it's going to be possible. So he's losing probes in the main. And he's forced off that mineral patch. And he can't break out. Everything going wrong right now. And Rich is just about done, man. He is about 10 supply behind. Templar are getting sniped. There's another observer kill. This is just icing on the cake for Xiao Shuai. As this lurker is... He's trying to clear this lurker. He really wants to get back to mining here. But I think that Rich has just kind of given up. He might be communicating with his team. Like, just frustrated. He might be cursing his monitor. I'm not really sure. Punching his monitor. Uh, who knows where his emotional state is at at this point. Because this has just gone so, so wrong. And twice in a row, really. With the cheeky plays from Xiao Shuai. Very Zealot-esque, as I was saying before. To go for just a, a pure layer-based drop play. Uh, to pull your opponent apart. It, it requires such a high level of concentration and multitasking. Task switching. Uh, to hold all of these drops and all these attacks at the same time. That most players just can't handle it. And yeah, most players will fall apart. Even the best in the world, a lot of them will just shatter when it comes to this play. And it's not that hard to do if you've practiced it a lot. Uh, the multitasking involved is not that difficult for the Zerg player. You're just, uh, you know, bringing everything forward, all your Hydras forward, and then going for drops. And, you know, a just going back and forth between the drop play and the that it, it's, it's a concept that I think many of you guys will be familiar with. It's like if your opponent like if you play your style and your style is really weird like you might have played this same style in the same game state thousands of times whereas your opponent might have only faced that same thing you know a couple of times or you know a dozen times or something like that and so they won't be as used to like they're they're they may may have played even more games than you but they haven't played that specific game as many times and you might be able to take them down um, just because you have more experience like you drag your opponent down into the dirt uh, down to your level and beat them with experience and I think that's what Xiao Shuai did here today he crushes him in the natural and Rich has been taken down China will win round number one will Team Korea be able to bring it back and bring us to an ace match in round number two. It's coming right up. Well, I can hardly believe that this is a co coincidence. Hardly random here. We've got Xiao Shuai versus Rich once again with Xiao Shuai in the top left. Rich in the bottom right in round number one. Just reminding myself, we've finished with the exact same matchup. Xiao Shuai versus Rich on Neo Dark Origin. And we also had another match between the two of them on Apocalypse. So here, as we're going into round number two, which is actually a King of the Hill round between China and South Korea. We're going to start off with this match. It's uh, hard for me to believe that this was randomly selected, but either way, King of the Hill has begun. Who's going to carry their squad? Is it going to be Rich? Is it going to be Xiao Shuai? One of these two is about to be eliminated. And seeing how the previous games went, I'm not really sure who it's going to be. Xiao Shuai has won both of the two previous games. But it wasn't by a lot. It wasn't totally overwhelming. I feel like Rich 
is a very strong player. A very good ladder Protoss. It should give us a good game. He gets in here and sees the uh, main base. He sees the spawning pool right off the bat. Xiao Shui going to send his drone over to that third. And guys, uh, I casted round one yesterday. I'm casting round two today. Uh, this morning, uh, we had a pretty rough time on ladder. It was not the greatest of my performances. I had quite a few people... Uh, watching live so thanks to any of you who showed up and uh, supported the stream but uh, it's tough to play under pressure man I think we had like uh, 35 people watching something like that quite a lot of chatters too so uh, going back and forth with the stream and trying to play this game it is not an easy task there's quite a few players who make it look effortless but it really does take its toll. And uh, I was, yeah, having a hard time. We're still grinding in B rank. We're still trying to uh, figure out how to play against Protoss. So this is a good little lesson for me here. I can see how Xiao Shuai plays this one out. He's doing a good job just tracking this probe. He hasn't seen that there's a Zealot or anything. He hasn't seen, uh, you know, anything aside from the timing of when this probe came out. So uh, just based on that, he's only produced two lings up until this point. He's going to have an overlord on the way here in a moment. This should be an overlord right there. And then he'll switch into making some. Yeah, there it is. Overlord. He'll, he's, he'll switch back into making some lings here in just a moment. He'll get up to about six, maybe eight lings total. Leave one chasing this probe here. And use the rest to deal with the first zealot. See, the first zealot pops out right around this time. So as soon as your overlord finishes, you start producing lings. They'll pop out at the perfect time to deal with this first zealot. With everything else being even, everything else being equal. Uh, this is the perfect timing. So, six lings are on the way. He's going to go up to eight. More than enough to de deflect this initial zealot. If you're really good at control and the Protoss player is not controlling well, not targeting well, you can actually beat a Zealot with just three Lings, but eat, uh, all of the Lings will be on very low HP at the end of that. Uh, just one hit away from death, so it's much better to go with at least four. Uh, six is to be truly safe. Now he's got four Lings here in the main. He's got four Lings at the natural. And that's just perfect for these two zealots that are about to come in. Usually you'll see the split. One zealot comes in here to draw the attention. And then the second zealot comes in to attack into the main. But since we've got two zealots heading over here, he's going to immediately draw these links over towards his third base and try to deal with this. Doesn't want to engage before all four links are here, but has to keep his drone safe. And I think he's done a very good job so far. Two Zealots are being left back at home. So Shao Shui doesn't need to worry about more Zealots coming in and harassing his mineral mineral line in the natural at this point. He's just producing a lot of drones. He has his Spire on the way. Oh, he can hit over that wall. What range is that? Are you kidding me? Look at where the drone died. This, this is the center of mass right here. The drone died there. And the Zealot attacked it from that range. Are you out of your mind that is ridiculous and the links by the way the links can't hit over this anyway two more zealots heading over towards the natural Xiao Shui in a bit of trouble here if he doesn't have links on the way and he does not have links on the way my friends he is going to have a bit of a hard time with these two zealots coming in creep colony trying to go down here some damage in this natural for sure nothing he can do about that he's gonna have to pull away even pulling the drones off the mineral line is damage that is painful for the zerg these two scourge need to be sent to actually deal with this corsair but he's doing too much at the same time right now this is where things get a little bit crazy and even the best players in the world will miss certain things out of their build they're trying to control on multiple fronts like this. Igelus pops out over here. He loses another drone, dropping down to 25. 
as a bunch more on the way. Four lings against two zealots is a very uneven fight. He'll definitely end up losing those lings, and Xiao Shui gonna lose another drone. He's really falling apart here, guys. Having a very hard time handling just this basic early pressure from the Protoss. It's not what we expect out of Little Handsome. This guy is usually handling all of these moves so well. Man, he is really falling apart here, letting Lings walk in single file and just get knocked down. I can't imagine this is a normal game for him. Um, oh gosh, he's gonna lose another drone. Oh, so painful. Seven kills. Seven kills on that. Oh, he almost lost another one there too. He's actually gonna finally finish this off with his drones and get them back to mining at the very end of the day things will be cleaned up and he'll start to stabilize but he doesn't have a sixth hatch he's not quite at that 45 drone count where you'd like to be at this point in the game and he has to start producing hydras oh god he's making all overlords where's the air defense oh no this is gonna go bad I can already feel it. Rich heading across with five plus one Corsairs and nothing is popping out but Overlords. Watch this. Oh my goodness, it's so painful. You hate to see it. DT coming in now. That DT gonna take quite a bit of damage. But as soon as these Corsairs do their job and push away the Overlords, he could come back in for some more. Oh, there we go. Getting some hits with these Corsairs. Scourge onto the Corsair. Not bad. He gets two Corsairs and forces the rest of them back. More Scourge are popping. He's going into armor and it looks like Xiao Shuai going to completely switch it up this game. He's already got the third gas up and he's going for Muta. Big time Muta play from Xiao Shuai here. And he's going to try and maybe break the main. This is kind of wild. He's just going to go for it here. We've got one cannon, a second one about to warp in. And how many stairs do we have? Ooh, this Templar right there. Oh boy. I don't think that has Storm. Maybe it does though. We're nine minutes in. Is it possible it already has Storm? That would be very unfortunate. Oh, that Storm, very, very good here. I mean, not good enough to save all of the Corsairs, but look at that. He saves the majority of them. Such a great storm, just casting it right on top of the Nexus so that none of the probes end up getting hit by it. Excellently held here. We've got seven more Mutas on the way, though, and this is going to have a part two follow-up here from Xiao Shuai. More Mutas are coming, and more Scourge will be soon to join them, I'm sure. Zealots, Dragoons starting to move out here. That Templar with four kills. Probably all of those Scourge. Just gonna be waiting here in the main base for a little bit more energy. More cannons coming up here as well. He starts another cannon up to three in the main. How many do we have in this mineral line? Three as well. Not in the mineral, mineral line, but in the natural. Three cannons are ready to defend. Up to six hatch Hydra now. It looks like we're actually planning to switch Tex back into Hydra pretty soon a lot of sunken no i know what he's doing i've seen this before a whole bunch of sunken colonies coming up right now and he is going to dive the main what a madman just going for it here we go three cannons in the main and rich hold on this is a lot of mutas but not that many scourge honestly Maybe not enough Scourge here to actually deal with... Okay, there's only four Corsairs. How many Scourge do we have? Well, if all the Scourge connect perfectly, he will be able to deal with that. But there's a Storm to contend with as well. Storm goes down. Okay. No more Storm available. But it seems like Xiao Shuai doesn't want any of that. He's just going to back away. Another nice Storm dodge here. Xiao Shuai. Finding ways to bait those Storms. And he's switching directly into Ling full-on ling production if you're gonna do this you actually need like two more hatches so i'm not sure what shao is doing right now with only six hatch you cannot use all your money you need two more hatches 100 we're at 50 drones 
can absolutely afford two more hatches. Um, but it doesn't seem like he's ready to throw those down just yet. And that means he's going to have a big bank going into this next fight. That is unfortunate. Five overlords on the way because he's supply blocked at the moment. Adrenal is on uh, coming up here as well. A straight adrenal rush from Shaoshui. What an interesting decision to make. This early on in the game, I don't know if it's going to be successful. But it certainly should make for an interesting engagement here. Adrenal. Is it actually going to kick in in time for this next fight? Drones are being sent out. And the sunken colonies are going to start this engagement. A lot of lings here. And we're going to come from the side. One storm thrown down. Pretty ineffectual storm there. But the sunken colonies are being broken through. Lings are coming out to the front. We have the mutas coming from behind as well. Where are the scourge? There they are. Scourge making their way over. Storm goes down on a lot of these mutas. Dealing quite a bit of damage here. Oh, the Scourge flying over top of the Dragoons is actually going to cause quite a bit of damage to them. Oh, he loses all of these Corsairs. More Emergency Sunkins coming down. But only 12 links are on the way. And look at that bank right now. A thousand minerals in the... It, oh, God. There's one more storm. A thousand minerals here waiting. He was going to Ultra, boys. I guess that's why he wasn't producing those extra sunkins. Or those extra hatches. Because he was thinking that he would just go right into Ultra here. But I think that Rich has broken the back before this play really comes into effect. He's bashing away at the hatches at the front. More sunkins are being made, but more reinforcements are coming across the map at the same time. The third base fully established now, mining away. Zhao Shuai is being pushed all the way up into his main base. Can't even protect the natural right now, and only the small numbers of lings popping out. Going to be completely ineffective against this large Protoss force. All the drones in the natural starting to fall. As more and more rallies make their way across the map, it's clear to me that Zhao Shuai will have to tap out. And there he goes. He leaves this game. Oh, man. That's not how you want to play that one. Jeez. Pure Ling Muta. Maybe he got a little bit cocky, honestly, after beating Rich two times in a row in round number one. Um, and now he's just knocked out. That is really, really rough. Xiao Shuai basically carried the team, getting half of their wins in round number one, and now he's just gone. And so the rest of the Chinese squad will have to pick up the slack here in round number two. I don't know what we can expect from this round, but Rich is going to move forward. Who will his next opponent be? Let's find out. All right, game number two of round number two. We've got Rich here versus Joseph J Star PVP. Are you guys excited? Strap in. Because this is one of the only PVPs we're going to cast this week for sure. We hardly ever cast PVPs. And it's honestly one of the main reasons that I decided not to play Protoss. I actually enjoy PvZ and PV PvT pretty well, but if you're going to play Protoss on the ladder, you're going to hit about 70% of the time. It's going to be PvP, which just not my favorite matchup. It's not my cup of tea, you could say. And I think a lot of you guys will agree with me or sympathize with me in that. ZVZ is also not the greatest. It's not the most fun matchup. ZVT and ZVP are very fun, but ZVZ is very fast. Which is the reason why I like to play Zerg so much. And why I'm trying to, uh, you know, ladder with them. Uh, the majority of the time, sometimes I go to Terran casually every once in a while. But I'm not a big fan of TVP, honestly. TVP is so hard. Such a nightmare. And so, I much prefer to play Zerg. But uh, completely mirrored builds here so far. And I'm just going to keep talking until we get some sort of divergence in the builds. And I've got something to talk about because I am fasting right now. It's Tuesday. And I've been fasting every Tuesday for about a month. 
and I'm planning to continue to do that for the foreseeable future. It's not a religious thing or anything. It's just that uh, I think it makes me feel more grateful. And I think there are some, some good health benefits like uh, autophagy and that type of thing. And so uh, it's going to help me a little bit with cleaning out some of those dead cells, you know, staying healthy and hopefully feeling a little bit, a little bit more grateful for my situation, for my life and, and for the, the benefits that I've been granted in that I can, I can eat every day if I want to and don't have to starve. And, uh, yeah, it's like, it's like a, a kind of a mental thing as well, right? Like not eating. It does take quite a bit of mental fortitude to just abstain from food when there's food all around you and you're very hungry. And I, I think that's a, it's a great lesson as well to train your mind. It's like we're going to have the first divergence here. Finally, it's really hard to talk about other things other than Brood War that are going on in my life while I'm watching Brood War on my screen. Uh, I actually had to restart this recording a couple of times because I went way off on a tangent and I was like, oh, that was that was not quite the way I wanted this cast to go. So I had to restart. We've got the little Dragoon exchange here. It looks like J-Star going to make a run for it, which is the right choice. He's only got one gateway. He went for the earlier robotics facility. And there's two gateways back at home for Rich, which means he should have more Dragoons. He's only got one out here on the field right now, and he's got a probe trying to get in, trying to find some more information. And he does need to back away from these two Dragoons, of course, make sure that they don't uh, get the moving shot on. It's not like you can get a full moving shot with Dragoons, but you can get quite a bit of damage onto a Dragoon if you manage to get close enough. You might even be able to kill it if you have, uh, you know, two, three dra Dragoons and you get pretty close in range to that Dragoon. Like, if you get right up next to it, even though you have to stop to shoot, you might be able to damage it quickly enough to get rid of it. That 20 damage is very high. We'll chop through that uh, hull health very quickly with just a few Dragoons and... Rich being kind of dangerous here, really tempting the fates by poking in over and over again just to see what's coming down from J-Star, but J-Star's just sitting on one gateway. He only reveals two Dragoons. He hasn't revealed anything more. Here's like a Nexus is about to go down, but this is double gateway into robotics, then Nexus. Whereas J-Star, his build is a lot more fluid with only one gateway and the Nexus is about to come down. His Nexus will be nearly at the same time. Pretty close, pretty close. Somehow though, we've got the faster Reaver and more probes for Rich. That is pretty impressive actually. Less Dragoons, I guess. He made two Zealots and only three Dragoons. So he was actually halting a lot on his production. So the, ex the extra gateway really didn't do much for him, but he's going to start to produce a lot more now. And I mean, he got, he got ahead. So I guess I can't fault him. There's another dragoon coming to the front. First Reaver going to crawl down to the natural. And the Nexus, uh, the Nexus will finish up. Somebody let me know that in the comments recently that Nexus uh, since it's, uh, I think Latin or something like that, I mean, it shouldn't be Nexi. It should be just Nexus for multiple Nexus. I, I'm not sure about that. I definitely didn't look it up myself. Just kind of took his word for it. Let me know in the comments if you guys are aware the plural verb, the plural form of Nexus. Probes being transferred now on both sides. A lot of probes being transferred here. It's like about the same amount from JSR. Maybe a little bit less. First shuttle is about to come out as well. Shuttle already on the field for Rich. Who's sending 
single shuttle, single reaver. Whereas we're about to have double reaver in a shuttle with a bit more of a power spike here for J-Star. Speed is on the way though for Ridge. Now, can we get in here and deal some damage with this initial reaver? He's right up next to there. Oh, that was a beautiful drop. You see him like crawl forward with the reaver? If you drop the reaver right there and take a shot, you actually won't connect because the, or you, you might connect, but it has to go around. You're gonna have to go around with the scarab. But because he crawled his reaver up close, he was able to fire over the mineral patches, which is a great maneuver. It gets him a lot more damage. And now he's nine workers ahead, but he's only, you know, six army supply ahead. So there might be an opportunity here for J-Star to deal a little damage. He's putting himself in an awkward position though, where the army is actually behind him. And so he might end up having a hard time here. Gonna use that shield battery at the front. Oh my goodness, this is getting a little crazy. I think J-Star might be completely surrounded and outgunned though. It's a little bit too much here. And yeah, he's gonna lose everything. Well, this really didn't go well for J-Star. He think he might tap out. He just lost his shuttle. Shuttle speed is done for Rich, and Rich has a huge advantage in basically every way. He's almost doubling the supply. He's killed all the dragoons. There's J-Star. He taps out, and Rich is on a roll. Two games in a row. Hopefully, that's the last PvP of the night. A little bit of an anticlimactic one there. I spent more time talking about fasting than anything, I think. And uh, there was so little action, it actually didn't make a difference. So we're gonna jump into this next game. Hopefully it's not PVP. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Okay, it's time for everybody's favorite matchup. It's PVP. Shao Ga Ga in the top left-hand corner. Rich in the bottom right. Now I've just thinking about it. Maybe the reason I was having such a struggle on the ladder today was because of my fasted state. That's potentially possible. Things feel a little different when you haven't eaten and you're used to eating. Uh, am, I, am I on normal speed or something? Oh, I'm on faster. That's the reason. It felt slow. Felt a little bit off there. So here we go. Now we're on fasted speed. That's a bit better. Definitely don't want to go on faster. Fastest is the normal and I would actually prefer two times speed, just um, personal preference for this matchup. But we're gonna go ahead and cast this out anyway. All biases and jokes aside, we're gonna give these guys a fair shake. Rich here on a roll. Can he get a number three? Can he take another win off this Chinese squad? He's already done half the work for his team. They only need to get four wins in this best of seven. And so, you know, he's carrying more than his fair share of weight, although he did get two losses last round. So making up for his difficulties in round number one, he's already done that. And he's looking for more Zealot being produced on either side. Neither player gonna skip the Zealot on a two player map. One thing you can do is build pylons at any of these locations right here, here, and here. And that will potentially trap probes. Like right here, if you build a pylon, you trap a couple probes back there. And you force the minor section to go around the back sometimes. So it's pretty annoying. And so you'll rarely see a Protoss player skip Zealot on a two-player map. Because if you start throwing down pylons and you're waiting for that Dragoon... The Dragoon really doesn't do much damage to the Pylon, and it takes a lot longer. Like, the, the Zealot is faster. It comes out quicker. Uh, it does faster, like, more DPS. Single target DPS. I mean, they're both single target, but it does very quick DPS uh, with its side blades. can take out that Pylon pretty quickly, a lot faster than just a Dragoon. And, um... Yeah, I mean, it's it's super necessary. Whoa, there it is. We don't have the 
uh, pylon blocking, but we're gonna get one of the tropes of PvP. We're getting another one of those. Um, yeah, what would you call it? Like a trope, I guess. A a meme, basically from PvP, which is the rock paper scissors has been thrown. Rich is throwing down his scissors. He's got his two fingers extended forward. Two fresh gateways just finish up here. And it's three gate goon into two gate, uh, two gate robo. Let's see when he throws down his... Oh, he's going to drop into the pile on here. But when will he get his reaver out? The reaver is going to be super key to holding this. And it's a good thing he's got his robo so close to the ramp. That's going to help a lot. It's also nice that this is a high ground ramp because this build is very popular on flat maps for a reason when there's no high ground going into your main base from your natural it becomes way harder to hold on against this three gate goon style so the fact that he's got the high ground here it's telling me that he's probably gonna be okay he might be able to hold on against this uh, it's just going to be a little bit tough. Let's see how it goes, though. More goons coming across the map here. He's waiting on the side with some goons, just hoping that something will come over there or trying to hide the fact of how many goons he actually has. You can't wait for too long here, though. You got to make this, this move pretty soon. As Rich, you don't want to wait forever. Uh, and potentially, you know, have a reaver to deal with at the top of that ramp. You'd much rather poke in, kill a bunch of these units. He's actually hoping that these dragons will come down the ramp. If the dragons come down the ramp, it makes his life way easier because he can fight and potentially kill a bunch of the dragons and then try to run up the ramp, oh, you know, chasing the remainder uh, as quickly as he can. See, he's still hiding his dragoon number here kind of dancing under the observer daring his opponent to come down and take this fight but we're gonna wait for reaver here and xiao Gu Gu, very smart player not gonna be baited in by his opponent oh is he actually gonna come down here he's waiting for the reaver for sure these dragoons are gonna come forward start to poke at the zealot He's almost in the main base. Just needs to wait a little bit longer. No Nexus. That's really important to see. He's seen three Dragoons just pass underneath. And there it is. He sees the triple gateway. And this is kind of a calamity for Rich. Rich, he's been hiding Dragoons this entire time. But Shao is no fool. He knows that there's going to be a lot of Dragoons out there somewhere. That he's going to have to contend with. He's going to send the Observer back home and start to climb down this ramp, I think, pretty soon. Look at this spread from Rich. He's being getting really, really well spread just for when this Reaver shuttle comes down the ramp. Second Reaver is about to pop. He's going for Gravitic Drive. A Nexus starts on the other side of the map. If Shao Guga loses his Reaver and shuttle... He is going to be in a lot of trouble. He will probably lose this game. But this is a serious advantage right now for our Chinese Protoss player. He is in a in great shape. There's also the potential that he could just pick up these Reavers and go to the other side of the map. Try to harass with them. That is, an, that, that is absolutely a, a reasonable decision to make in this situation like this. There's really nothing back at home here. And the Gravitic Drive is about to finish. That's a very fast shuttle. He sees all of the units. He knows exactly where they all are. He knows he can't really come down this ramp right now. The only thing is, like, if he sends the Reavers across the map, will there be an opportunity for Rich to ram up this ramp with his entire army? So they're going to pick up two Zealots and the Reaver. I'd really love to see him pull the Reaver back a bit. 
um, just so that it can't be sniped immediately. He's going to go around the side here. He got, got spotted by the probe. Goons are going to head out to try and intercept this. It's actually going to send the zealot over here. A little bit risky with the shuttle right now. Nexus is done at the natural. Still just pumping out units. Both players just pumping out units. But now we're going to see the transfer of probes. And this is going to get a little bit worse for Shao Gagusun. If he doesn't get out and get his own Nexus or deal insane damage on Rich's side of the map. He could be in a lot of trouble. He's going to try and break out now. Here we go. Dropping the Reavers behind the Mineral Patches. This is some great connections on these with these Reavers. Oh boy. Really, really good hits with the Scarabs doing so much damage to these Dragoons. And he is absolutely going to blast out of his natural. Can he push through this reinforcement wave though? He's got to get the Reavers up here. They are his his advantage right now. It's the only reason he's still in a very good position. Great job keeping that shuttle alive because this is his bread and butter right now. This is everything for our Chinese Protoss. He's got to go across the map now and make this push happen. The Nexus has already been up for a little bit too long. Just triple gateway still. He really needs to actually increase that gateway number. Start pumping up those numbers, kid, because it's time for a big attack. And all he's doing is producing dragoons against three dragoon or three gate, four gate goon. Oh my god, four gates? Can he even produce off of that? I don't think so. He's got more gates than uh, his opponent right now. That's kind of insane. We had a robo, but the overwhelming production coming from Shao Gugu is just going to be too much. Yeah, Rich has to tap out. What a weird game. Four gate. Four gate. What? Is that... Is that crazy? Four gate reaver of one base versus three gate goon off of two base. Am I high? Am I crazy? Is this uh, fasting going to my head? Am I, am I losing my brain? The heck is happening in this game? What a wild one. All right, we're going to jump into our next one. I really don't know what to say about this. PvP, guys. Just throw our hands up in the air. PvP, I guess. All right, let's jump into the next one. Okay, some TVP. This is the matchup where the men are separated from the boys. And the boys are separated from their ladder points. We've got JW, Jehovah's Witness 4040, in the bottom left-hand corner. And over here in the top right, we've got Xiao Gu Gu for the Chinese squad. South Korean Jehovah's Witness. I'm sh I can imagine it. I can imagine it. If you guys have ever been to South Korea, you know that they're really into God over there. They love Jesus. That is for sure. No gas here. He's going to put it in his hands and try to take a quick CC off of one barracks. It's just that relatively standard uh, gasless fast expand coming out of a 4040. And on the other side of the map, no zealot at all for Shao Gugu. Just gonna go ahead and slowly make his way into a initial dragoon to deal with scouting pesky workers and eventually put on the pressure coming in doesn't get to steal the gas jw making sure that does not happen he really wants to prevent the gas steal here next is about to come down it's slightly after the command center but it's not the end of the world we're going to be able to take the protoss tax from our Terran foe. As soon as we get that range finished up, which is going to be on the way here in just a moment. Finery. Going to be finished off now that it was started a little bit earlier in preparation for this moment. 
And no range just yet. Hmm. Do I sense something sneaky here from uh, fr from Shaoguga? No, I guess not. Well, SCV is going to come in and see everything. And so he's going to... Oh, yeah. I like where your head's at. Shaoguga starts the... Uh, Plus one air weapons because he has no intention of building anything off of this cybernetic score. He just wants to create the perception of something being built there. He's going to go ahead and throw down a robo. Or is it going to be DT? Oh, he missed the SCV. It looped back around. Robo's on the way, but this is a little bit unfortunate. As the SCV makes its way in. He's going to see everything. And finally the range is going to start. But this is a very late range. He won't be able to put on any pressure to the bunker at all. And so... JW is just going to chill. He's got nothing to worry about. He's going to start his second factory now. Keep on pumping those workers with two marines in the bunker. He is 100% safe. At least until this reaver gets out and starts to say something about it. Got the machine shop coming up here. We'll see if he goes for a tank or just directly into vulture. Very quick armory here. Immediate. Immediately into... Siege mode, which I'm I was not expecting Because we know that it's you know, this robotics facility that's coming down uh, What's a great counter to Robotics well just get some mines in your base if you've got a few mines a couple turrets here and there turret here You know turret here. Maybe the turret here possibly probably gonna want to put one in the natural as well you know, four turrets and then some mines scattered around behind the mineral patches here and then around this part. You're going to be pretty darn safe. When I see the early siege tech, I feel like you're sacrificing a little bit in order to get, you know, more defense out. And it just doesn't feel from this position that Shaga can really do anything aside from build a reaver and send it at you. He's delayed his range so much, and he's slowed down the number of goons he was producing. To such a small trickle, it's unlikely he'll be able to do anything. Now, he absolutely can't deal damage right now with the two tanks here. That's just not even a possibility, but it's not like we have vultures out roaming the map or laying down mines here and there. Shaoguga is going to feel completely safe and comfortable as well. And that's usually not the position you want the Protoss player to be in as the Terran. You want to put pressure onto that Protoss. You want to make sure that they fear you. As they're taking their expansions, they need to be slowed down. And prevented from easily securing those... Transferring probes should be a nightmare for the Protoss. Not just an easy point and click. You need to be protecting those units because vultures are out on the map looking for kills. Just in this game, we're not going to have that situation. It's JW sitting back, being really cautious, building a starport. He's going to go directly into plus two. And this is just not a typical build anymore. We don't see this very often. I think the only person who's doing it really frequently anymore is Flash. Flash has been doing this on the ladder recently to mixed success, like mixed results for sure. It's just not as strong as it used to be because Zer the, the Protoss are really acting like Zerg. They're just building up huge, huge armies and expanding like mad. Getting tons of drops out and just bombing your tanks like crazy. And so this feels to me like a reasonably good position for Shaoguga to be in. 
I think he's probably pretty happy with this spot. JW. Going for the older style. Will add on more factories now. Going up to five as his third command center finishes. But how much success is he going to find pushing out against Shagaga here? Who's got four factories of his... Or four gateways of his own. He's soon going to be adding on a whole bunch more. And he's got Reaver plus Zealot ready to take fights. He sees the command center with that observer. So he knows the intentions here of JW. Plus two just begins. And plus one is on the way as well. But this is the weakness of this build. Is that while you're waiting for plus two to kick on. You're going to have way less units in this critical phase of the game. This phase where you're about to try and take your third. You're not going to have a critical mass of units. And you won't uh, have reaped the benefits of that plus two yet. The plus two is not online. And so you're going to have to take this fight without either of those two resources. The extra units or the plus two upgrade. Here comes a drop into the main. I accidentally clicked a supply depot there. Oh my goodness. A mine connection is absolutely huge flying in right as jw is trying to push out quite a few scvs have gone down already and jw just going to spread a little bit okay he gets the reaver that's actually kind of big getting rid of the reaver like that a little bit more micro on that probably would have netted him more damage oh this zealot drop is sick these tanks where were they going jw Making some serious mistakes in this game. Loses two tanks basically for free. He's already lost a lot else. A lot of SCVs have gone down. He's a full 10 SCVs. 12 SCVs behind or workers behind the Protoss at this point. And we are getting into that big time gateway count. No second Robo just yet. As the fourth base comes online though, anything is possible. I have so much money coming in. So many units can be produced. Third base is now operational. And it's fine. You know, 30 bases with 60 workers is absolutely fine. It's absolutely fair for JW. He should be able to put up a really good army here. He should be able to pump out a lot of tanks. He needs to get his third gas going. So that he can put down a third machine shop and really start to hammer out the tanks now. But I think he's he's doing reasonably okay. Like he's he's handling his business right now. He's getting ready. But he's not quite prepared to move out yet. 132 to 160. I want to wait a little bit longer. And you especially want to wait for these plus two upgrades to finish. Plus two plus one, excuse me, to finish up here very important that you wait for that upgrade don't want to be aggressing before that point in time zealots are going to be dropped out here another dive into the main another mine oh my goodness that mine he uh, took a bunch of damage from that and then replaced that mine immediately after creature of habit this uh jw certainly doing this you know doing the same thing over and over oh my god God, okay, that does not connect. Pretty good move there with the Reaver. Hopping it forward, or, you know, moving it forward right next to the Mineral Patch so that it will fire over. We've already seen that once today, but it's a very important move for the Protoss. The ability to make that happen, it should actually be a micro test. We need to make a micro test map with that. Um, you know, you dropping Reavers and trying to get them to fire over Mineral Patches is a, it's a real skill. Difficult to master. Oh. Oh my god. That's so many gateways. That's six gates right there. That's nine. 10, 11, 12, 13 gateways total. I guess that's not crazy, but just looking at that big patch of gateways got me tripping for a second. So many tanks moving out. Vultures here. Gonna go ahead and surround some of these dragoons. Chagaga was not paying attention for the beginning of this, so he is going to lose the majority of these tanks, but I think it's okay. Just trade out a few vultures here and there. Reinforcements are coming up now. 
She's gonna hold position on that high ground. Another base on the way. Five base. This is five. This is six. Six base. I, I think we're getting into a position where if this sixth base comes up and it's, you know, def well defended, you're gonna be so far behind that you actually can't win at that point. Shuttles come in. They start to drop off your four shuttles in the main. There's a big storm drop as well. Can you actually get this off? Oh, great storm drop there. Another good one should follow. Yeah, very good storm drops in this mineral line, dealing quite a bit of damage. Still 57 workers, though. Still 57 here for JW. He really needs more turrets over in this spot. It's been a reoccurring theme here for Shagaga to keep hitting that over and over. He's starting to lose a bunch of supply depots. Oh no, the drop over here as well. Eight kills on this one Hyde Templar. I guess he doesn't have enough energy, actually. There we go. Now he's got the energy. Deals a little bit more damage. Gonna hide that shuttle over here as well. Super annoying to know that that's just sitting there waiting for another opportunity to wipe out your mineral line. Need to actually make a, a wraith at this point to get rid of that. Tanks are trying to move out. 137 supply to 194. I think we might be dead. Shao Guga is looking way too strong right here. He's even taking top left as well. And Jehovah's Witness, I mean, he's fallen flat at the moment. He really needs to make a move. But he can't. I just don't think he can. Fourth base gonna come up in a moment. There's that storm once again, wiping out even more SCVs. He's gonna make an Archon to add insult to injury. Coming in with these Zealots to try and break the position. This is one way to throw a game if you take a really bad fight against the Terran, but oh my goodness, so many SCVs go down. 39 remain. That's not even enough to saturate the bases that are left remaining. 18 kill arc on this archon's doing so much work he's actually going into the main now to just to deliver some more pain here what a chad archon 19 kills will be the limit no 20 kills he finally finds his maximum moving forward here some storms getting thrown down a lot of them on mines is not a terrible choice a lot of the templar do fall though at the end of that fight the tail end of that fight not going the greatest there for shao Gu Gu, but he is just so far ahead i feel like i could take my hands off the keys and just sit back and relax at this point this army is all that matters once this gets taken out i think we'll have to see Terran tap and there's no real reason for any more drops at this point. We've already killed so many workers. We really only need to stop this army. And then we will be good. 138 to 190 now. The army is its looking scary. It's plus three, plus one. It's not, nothing to uh, sneeze at. But he's parked on top of some mines. And here comes the drops. This mine connection could be absolutely massive. Oh, and it was. That's it. That's the GG move right there. Absolutely smashed this army. And you can see the supply just plummeting down. 182 to 1, 1, 1. This round of zealots could actually clear all the tanks now at this point. And he's got gateways all over the map. That's a bit of an artosis pile in if I ever saw one. I guess this one probably covers over here. No cannons actually over by the mineral patches, which is a little bit funny. You rarely ever see that. That's a pretty big mistake. The cannons in the front are great, but you actually need cannons around your mineral line to make sure that your probes don't all just die like what we're seeing at the moment. Everything falls back here for JW, but he's about to get hit right where it hurts. Six o'clock, unloaded with full zealot and a few Templar to clear out the masses. All of the SCVs go down. No survivors whatsoever here. And JW loses again his 
critical SCV count that he needs to actually, you know, fight in this game. He just can't really do anything now. Surprised that he's not building some dragoons over here to deal with these. Maybe some cannons, you know, build something over there to deal with that. But I guess he's a little bit busy at the moment, moving his army and getting prepared for his next attack. Still not mining here from this gas over uh, at the fourth, uh, fifth base, excuse me. But not many tanks here at all. JW he is in such a bad way. He's just clinging to a hope that we have a huge mistake here from Shao Gaga. It could happen. Could happen. I'm not going to discount it. But I imagine that Shao Gaga is good enough to play this one out at least. To take this one to a win really shouldn't be a tall order. Here we go. Sending in the shuttles. Dropping right on top of everything once again. Storms are not going to get out, which is pretty bad. But honestly, he breaks the base, which is all you need to do. Just get in here, make a nightmare for the Terran player. He's got one more storm ready. He can toss it down on these tanks if he's paying attention. Looks like he's not for the moment. And so you know, these tanks will be able to clear everything. Pretty shocking. 4K in the bank now. 4,000 minerals. Are we going to see a carrier switch at some point i would if i'm i mean i don't play protoss but we're missing out on a lot of gas here and i feel that building air weapon right now would be really really beneficial you might as well get that upgrade right it's only going to help you if you tra if you transition later and that 100 100 is not a lot of money to throw away on an upgrade if you don't if you don't um, end up transitioning into carrier, I don't think you're going to miss that 100-100. 100, 100. 100 gas, 100 minerals. It's probably just going to be a loss no matter what at that point. You're going to have traded too poorly or thrown away your army at an like a impossible time. Yeah, there we go. GG finally called. JW taps out. Bit of an anticlimactic finisher there as well. With Shout Good Good getting in for that final storm, just wiping out the economy. Very annoying stuff here, I'm sure, for JW. As he gets harassed over and over and over again, finally taps out. GG. Jump into our next game. HJS going to be the next Korean player to take the stage here against our King of the Hill right now. Shout Good Good down here in the bottom right. Guys, I just took a short break, ran out to the gym. I didn't run, but I drove over to the gym and did legs today. So I am a bit knackered right now. Pretty tired, but I told myself I was going to finish this uh, week of the China-Korea CKW tournaments by tonight. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to finish this off. And oh my goodness. Is this what I think it is? So you're gonna try and do some sort of sneaky cannon cheese. He's got the forge here at the front. Here comes that worker to go ahead and put that down, but he doesn't block. All right, we'll let that go ahead and run by HJS. Just gonna go ahead and take the third anyway, so no big deal. False alarm here. I'm just chilling. Legs are pretty sore right now. Um, I had it like uh, two weeks ago, I think now, quite a while ago that I did legs um, for the first time in probably two years did I not do like a full leg day uh, because of injuries and, and that travel and that sort of thing. So, you know, I've been doing you know, running, hiking, um, I did stairs, did sprints, did, you know, jogging and stuff, but I didn't do like a full on leg day for so long when I came back and I did I did legs that one day. Oh my gosh. It was painful. It was so painful. I couldn't even sleep that night. My legs were so sore. 
I couldn't sleep. I put on some muscle cream after a couple of hours of trying to get to sleep and it burned and froze my legs so bad. I slept like two hours in the whole night. That was rough. Hopefully that doesn't happen tonight. Uh, really hoping that doesn't happen tonight. We've got a gas nexus, everything looking just so exactly normal and nothing out of the ordinary here is what that probe's going to see. And this overlord here parking right over top of the nexus. He's just hanging. Just being a witness here to the glory of the probes. Their automation. Completely foreign to his eyes. An overlord who's only known evolution and animalistic. The ways of the zerg. Staring in awe at the mechanic the mechanics displayed here. No pilots at all. These are purely uh, controlled by the Nexus or by the AI. I don't even know. What is a probe controlled by? What do you guys think? Is it there's is there a little AI in there? Controlling that? I'm I'm talking lore wise. No, I obviously know that uh Xiao Gu is uh, controlling this probe, but lore wise, like, what are we saying? What's actually controlling these probes? Stargate here. Gonna finish up soon. Do we have that spire? No, not yet. Layer's just about to finish. Stargate halfway done. Might be a bit of a problem. I think it should be on time, though. He hasn't been under any pressure so far the first two zealots are out on the map they're just kind of hiding making themselves you know known on the map and then going back into the natural and that really hasn't scared hcs at all he's completely content just pumping only drones from here he's got eight lings out so four or two zealots not really that much of a threat citadel in the natural that's interesting Shall we go throwing down the citadel and then naturally it doesn't start plus one. It doesn't start plus one. Wait, where, where's plus one? I don't have plus one attack either. What is this? Wait, what am I looking at right now? Is this a DT? Was this, is this DT plays? This is so weird. No plus one on air or ground. Are we going to go to, like, I, I would think that you would go to Reaver with this build, but we're going into Templar. You know, usually when I come to the front and I see nothing spinning on the forge, I go, oh, it's Reaver. So maybe that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to trick HGS into thinking it's Reaver and then suddenly come out with DT. Is that what's about to happen? I am so confused. This is a really strange build. So cobbling something very interesting together here for us to witness. Shaoguga, I don't know how this is going to work. We don't even have zealot speed. There's plus one and plus one. What? I, I am at a loss, guys. I really don't know what's going on right now. Was this a mis th that can't be a mistake, right? There's no way. He just wanted the fastest fo possible Dark Templar. That's a very fast Dark Templar. I mean, that is r really, really quick. However, how is that supposed to do anything? Oh, did he actually? No, he didn't get one. Okay, he didn't get a Corsair. Important to note, no Corsairs going down thus far. Mutas are on the way now. The Zealots have been repelled. The DT is heading in. I am still completely lost. <laughs> Not a clue, guys. Not a clue. But HGS, he's got armor. Air armor on the way. It's going to finish before air upgrade uh, air plus one on these Corsairs. That is insane to me. That is insane. If he manages to take a engagement with plus one when... Uh, plus one air weapons isn't done. Oh my god, are the Mutas and Scourge going to wreck these Corsairs? It's silly. When the Corsairs are only dealing, what is it, like four damage? Yeah, when they're only dealing four damage per hit, it is so 
bad. Like, they don't do anything. Of course, the Scourge all connect. The Mutas can just almost fight straight up against the Corsairs. He's going to fly in now. It's a little early. But he is checking things out. Let's see if he can get some connections. No, not going to happen. Chalka go on top of that. Plus one speed. Oh, speed is finally going to finish. It's almost nine minutes in. That is crazy. Do we have... Do we, did we get Storm? I didn't see it in the production tab. But I might have just missed it. Making a, an Archon. Trying to get in here with the DT. You're just not, never going to get in there. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. That is a really nicely placed Sunken Colony. And... Um, that's what we can expect from a Korean pro, man. You, you're not going to just walk in and start killing drones with a DT. It's not going to happen. Uh, it doesn't matter how fast that DT is. You can't get it out fast enough to deal real damage with it. Um, plus one is done. Here it is. There's plus one. Let's see if he takes this fight. Oh my god. Please don't do that. Yeah, run, run. Gotta run. Alright, he's trying. He's trying it. Trying to push out here. Shaogugu wants to take a third base. It's a pretty quick third. Nine minute third is pretty fast. And I don't know that we're going to allow that to happen here. HJS, he hasn't pulled the trigger on like diving the main or anything. There's only two cannons here. And he had the upgrade advantage for a moment. It's gone now. Storm is on the way. Okay, there we go. Storm is, Storm is late. Storm is quite late, but it's okay. It is on the way now. One zealot over here. Maybe enough to stop these lings from killing the cannons. Maybe. Yeah, he will be able to, I guess. Fourth base on the way over here. Wow, big fleet of Scourge coming out. <clears throat> what would you call it? A murder of Scourge? Sounds about right. Kamikaze of Scourge? Alright, coming in towards this natural. He wants to take a fight with these Corsairs. Oh, boy. Well, a lot of those actually died without ex without connecting. Okay. Pretty good. Pretty good. Not bad at all. DT over here. Should be hitting that hatchery, but it's not. Just waiting there for HGS to notice and go kill it. Um, 11 Corsairs is a pretty sizable amount. That's a serious amount of Corsairs. But these do not have plus one armor. Plus one armor zealots are quite handy against... Uh, Hydras, but without that plus one, and the Hydras have plus one, I mean, you're just going to get pushed back so quickly. He's taking this fight before he even has Templar uh, with the energy, or he has energy now, but he's not bringing them forward to actually fight this. Corsairs are going in. I don't think he can hold this, guys. I really don't. It's going to be hard. As long as HGS controls correctly and dodges storms, he should be fine. He should be able to break this. Let's see how it goes. There's the first storm backing up to the cannons now. It is supply blocked at the moment. There's the first storm getting a big hit. But I don't know if it's going to be enough. He's got to back up to the cannons and bring forward reinforcements. Down to 71. Uh, 94 out of 71 is a pretty big, pretty deep supply block. Yeah, you got to have deep pockets to replenish those uh, overlords at this point. And he is actually losing quite a bit. Oh my god. Is he just going to lose straight up to the Hydras? HGS can't even produce anything. 12 Overlords on the way. The pockets are deep indeed. And Zealot counter... Or Zealot flank here with some Templar is going to help out a lot. But the cannons are falling. An Archon is made. And that's got to be it. Third base is going to go down for sure. Shao Gu losing control of this game. And HGS is about to take it home just finishing off this last cannon yeah that should be it all the probes going down here the corsairs trying to get as much damage as they can trying to kill off what overlords they can but the supply lead for hds is the indicator here we are so far behind at this point he does save the nexus though surprisingly keeping that nexus alive i think Purely through the efforts of these Corsairs, he manages to keep that Nexus alive. The Corsair is supply blocking HGS for such a long time. Now, there's actually Lurkers being made over here. And plus two is done. Oh, it's almost done. Plus one armor just finished, but plus two attack on these Hydras. And we're going to have a bunch of Lurkers. 
up on this high ground really, really soon. There's just four Templar over here, four storms. Four storms to try and deal with this. Some of the Zealots going down already. He's actually got to delay this a little bit longer. He's going to pull all the probes and run back to the natural. Relying on a counter attack to maybe deal some damage. Some Zealots making their way over here. Maybe after the DT did some damage there, he can actually pick that off. Is that possible? There's only two cannons in the natural, so I imagine it's uh, likely we might see HGS just go for the throat. He gets the third. Zealots in the main. This is getting a little bit wacky now. A lot of drones have gone down at the fourth base. And it, we could go target the... Oh! Okay, there's a good storm on quite a few lurkers. And his lurkers going to start to hit this wall now. The zealots are still making some noise over in the main base. Looks like this hatchery will fall. No, he gets the hatch. He's going to move out, kill the lurkers. Okay, okay, Shogaga. Not bad, not bad. He's holding, not, he's holding his own here, for sure. Making it a, making it a real difficult um, situation for HJS. He has to hold everything at once. Does he have one more storm? He has storm. Cast it. Cast it. There we go. Storms come down. And the last cannon will just remain here for a little bit longer. One more storm. He's got it. He's just got to cast it. What is he doing right now? He's running, running zealots around or something? Maybe saving the storm? Saving it for the next wave, maybe, of hydras making their way up here. Let me go after that gateway and open the position up a bit more Whoa, nice storm there very nice storm there as well one more dragoon gonna fall and there's almost nothing left one more storm is about to be ready there it is he casts it that's it that's all his storm everything has been utilized here for the defense but it's just not going to be enough hjs will take this one home there was some craziness there at the end it felt like uh, there was a bit of a chance for Xiao Guga, even though he lost that third base. He almost made it work. I just, I'm very confused about the the upgrade timing here. Like, delaying the plus one for that long and falling behind in upgrades feels really, really bad. It just didn't quite make sense to me. He was playing with some sort of new idea. I'm really not sure what it was, though. Uh, we'll see if he ever repeats that in the future. But for now, he's been knocked out. He's carried his team pretty well so far. He managed to get two wins on the board. But now HJS is the king of the hill. I think only Mihu is left over. Can he take out HJS? And bring us back to a tie? It's 3-2 to two for the Korean squad now. Mihu versus HJS. It's coming up next. Whoo, this is getting to be a long video, guys. We got HJS over in the top right hand corner versus Mihu in the top left. I decided not to break this into multiple parts, but I'm not sure I'm going to continue with that in the future. This really does feel like uh, quite the undertaking for just a single video. Um, some of the previous weeks were very short. Maybe that's why I got like a different impression. I thought that um, it wasn't going to be too bad, but I usually do um, pro league videos in two parts. So maybe I'll start following that format. Either way, we're getting into this. We're coming right down to the end here, guys. Mihu, the final Chinese player standing. He's going up against HJS, who is now the king of the hill. Didn't get a really solid read on HJS in that last game. Not, especially not enough to know like how he's just going to play uh, in this matchup. I don't think we saw him at all in TV. Uh, oh, no, we, we did see that. Okay. Hold up, hold up. We had in round one, I've completely forgotten about this. Round one, we had Mihu versus HJS. HGS won the first game, and then Mihu won the second game. And so I guess this is kind of like a tiebreaker here. Well, let's see how these two shape up. Trying to get the moving shot on this SCV. He's really going for it right now. But it looks like he's not 
quite going to be able to get there. He does have the overlord over the natural though. So he sees everything. He knows, oh, you know, what's coming out of Mihu. So he doesn't need to have that drone out on the map anymore. Just going to send it back to mine and we'll be getting this layer on the way pretty darn quick. He did open, I believe with the 12 hatch. Putting a little damage on that drone. This gas is quite quick though. Did he go gas before pool? Hmm, I might have missed that. This is a very fast layer. Usually you'll see it around three minute mark. But this is like a good 10, solid 10 seconds sooner. So maybe he did go gas before pool. I would reverse it, but you guys are completely capable of you know, clicking back a few seconds and just checking to see in the uh, production tab whether that was first or not we've got the speed on the way regardless more drones coming out just a couple of links just one single pair here with full information of over what me who's doing in the natural it's not really necessary to build more than that right now he might start some more okay does start another pair or two once he sees those marines start to move out a little bit he's gonna have six lings out here i'm gonna go ahead and make that spire get that second gas right afterwards all of this is shaping up to be a very quick mutalist play he's really gonna go ham with the mutas uh, off of two base i believe third uh dr drone gonna head out for that third base and link speed is just about finished. Okay, I think it's done now. Yeah, link speed is done. And the Marine's just going to hide back here behind this wall as the plus one upgrade starts. I think he's actually gone for that plus one build. Very popular right now. Getting the second racks after the eBay, the Academy are both done and plus one's already on the way so he may end up going to four racks that's been really popular lately but i'm not sure if that's what he wants to go with uh, it really does feel like it's lining up to to get uh to that position but you have to remember this spire is quite a bit quicker than it usually would be he did see the timing on the lair he knows exactly when it started he will go to four racks. Does he have enough money to go four racks, two comsats, and get turrets in time? He's cutting it a little bit close here, I have to say. Zerg, the Mutalists are, are about to pop. Definitely want to make these turrets before the Mutalists pop out. Okay, there we go. Turrets are on the way here. Cutting it pretty close, but I think these will be on time. The rush distance is really short by air. Oh, boy. Yeah, he's going to get it over here just before the turrets are done. Can he actually stop one of them? Nope. Turrets are finished in time. Very nicely timed out here by Mihu. I was doubting him for a moment there, but you can see he really had that timing down pat. The turrets are up and ready. Our third base is done here as a Zerg. We're going to start to dive in, start to deal a little damage to some of these Marines, but that's quite a few hits being taken on some of these mutas. You got to be careful. You want to save up to about seven mutas. Uh, eight is even better, but seven will get you that one shot. And then eight is nice because if you lose one muta, you can still one shot. Uh, and you're likely to lose one muta with the first dive. So coming in, going to hit some more of these Marines. Just one or two getting picked off, then dipping back out again, taking some damage, but that will heal. More Mutas being made now. And we're about to see Mihu move out with a huge force. He's got a very strong force of Marines right now. He's got the plus one. He's got the range. Mihu is ready to fight. He's ready to tango with these Mutas. It's going to be very tough to fight that. 
that force right there. Really, really hard for HGS to uh, take a good trade against this. The plus one really helping out a lot here. Quite a few mutas just went down to that. He kills both the turrets and a few marines. But that was a lot of traded out uh, mutas. And we don't have plus one just yet. Plus one is done for Terran. Plus one is not done for Zerg. Coming in to just take another swipe here. Slowing this army down just a little bit, but getting slightly out controlled here by Mihu. Going towards the natural now. Let's see if he can get in. Not even going to attempt it. Backing away, but losing the lings on the backside. Hydroden in the natural of bottom right. Scanning the main. Scanning, looking for a base, but he hasn't set. He hasn't found it yet. He doesn't know that it's down here in the bottom right, but probably it's something he might suspect. There was a time when players just weren't really looking for this base, for the natural. And it was very, very good for Zerks to take that. Uh, very surprising for Terrans to try and find that. Like, they were, they were having a really hard time searching for that base, but these days, it's much more common... And so Terran players are often sending out the you know, singular marines or scanning that area early. He does scan down there. Just checked it on the minimap and HJS has been spotted. His transition timing is well known now to Mihu and Mihu. How is he going to react? Fifth Brax on the way. He's about to get into vessel production. As you can see, very dark on the map right now for him. HGS has a lot more vision spread out all over, but this is a very scary marine force, and we're about to have plus one armor. This is actually the, the thing I think is so strong. Oh, boy. Oh, don't lose those medics. Only three medics here for this whole force. You really got to keep those alive. No more medics back here either, so that's really all, all he gets right now. I think this is the reason why this build is actually so, so strong and why players are really relying on it heavily now is the plus one armor timing to complement the plus one attack is actually very, very good. It helps you a lot when it comes to breaking through Lurker because you take a lot more hits from those Lurker. You take one extra hit per Marine to break through uh, these Marines HP. He's coming down here. He's only got three medics with it, four medics with this. Are you gonna be able to break it? Two more lurkers burrow. That is not breakable. Absolutely unbreakable here. Really nicely timed out by HJS. That was getting a little scary. But you can see these medics are super low on energy. They're really running out. And that's a lot of Marines to be tending to. We're going to have another base come down here in just a moment. That bottom right-hand corner is going to get taken here soon. Stacking up the lurkers as he should. Two lurkers here in the natural as well. Singular Marine going to get tracked down. Mutilus Ball heading into the main right now. Now that he has those lurkers in position. Can't really be broken for the moment. I'm going to go ahead and stack these up. He can definitely go across the map and start to deal some damage. Ooh, here comes drops. Two drop ships moving out here for Mihu. He's going to try to avoid the overlords, but I'm not sure if he did avoid that or not. He might have actually been spotted. More hatcheries going down. Mutas are here on the side, just out of vision of these two drop ships. Dropships are going to head in. They don't actually have that many units in them. This is only two medics in this one drop. I'm going to go after the drops right here, right now. Oh, he gets them both. That was a really nice defense by HAS. He's having a hard time pulling out this one Mita. But that is completely fine. Even if he loses all these Mitas to defend the drop play and kill both the dropships, it's absolutely worth it. Third base is going to come up here for Mihu. Double hatch. Filer's Mound getting that plague upgrade rolling. 
Does he have plus one armor yet? No, that's plus one just about upgraded right now. There's three lurkers under this. Overlord's sort of covering it, but I think you can get a pretty easy click on that. Maybe? Oh boy, okay. That's pretty hard actually. Might be difficult for him to get uh, irradiate on that uh, that unit there. He's gonna come forward and try it anyway. Looks like he just radiates the overlord. That's always a choice, not maybe the best choice, but at least it'll allow you to start to get through this uh, lurker stack. Of course, if a uh, muta or something else parks itself on top of that, it's not really gonna help much. Uh, another overlord can pop out as well. Ooh, almost getting one of those. That's pretty nice. We'll pick off the defiler, but losing a vessel, pretty rough for me who a lot of defilers out right now. It's actually maybe a little bit over over making those defilers here, HJS. Getting a few more drones out. He's at 40. Does need to saturate this fresh base though. Get that going here pretty soon, I imagine. And a base down in the bottom left. Are we going to transition to mech? Armory is on the way. We may see a transition to mech. I love it. Love to see it. Very hard to deal with as a Zerg player. You're spending all this money to get into Ultra. And Ultra is just not a good call. It's really not. Ah, there we go. Now we can see the plague. Green and white. Okay, that's not what I was expecting, but pretty good contrast here on the map. Doing green and white. Ah, he's gonna get the get, get the SUV. Ooh, that's a really good delay on the base and bottom left. Coming forward with some irradiates here. He really wants to get a couple off. He loses one of the vessels already. Another one should go down here with these uh, scourge coming out. There you go. Two more actually end up falling. Lurker gonna go down. But that's pretty, re still a pretty reasonable hold. We've got one Lurker. Oh god. One Lurker at this base. Is that for real? Oh, he's gonna come on and get this plague. Oh, this plague. Oh, it's juicy. Oh. The ketchup. The ketchup king here. HJS just basting it on right now there's another great plague oh my goodness so much value out of those two spells absolutely insane we're gonna probably start some factories down here in the bottom left in a moment we've got a factory in the main it's another one another factory here looked like he was gonna think about going battle cruiser he's actually upgrading ship weapons so maybe he still will build battle cruiser two actually in production but if we're gonna switch into mech I think we have to commit. He's still building infantry weapons. That's uh, that's a little bit strange. I'm not sure if that's the right call. I mean, eventually you can just get into tanks, right? A barracks down here. Really? Was not expecting that. Barracks over here is uh, quite surprising. I thought we were really going to have that mech transition, but maybe he just wants to build... Uh... Vultures for mines? Is that what is that what we're gonna see here? Still holding map control. It's 16 minutes now. HGS has been on four gases for a little bit. He's got four armor. Starting that fifth one now. But a few ultras are out here. He can't be eating a bunch of irradiates though. Gotta jump through these nidus. Oh gosh. Oh no. He's realized that there's not enough anti-air here. Oh, so many kills on these. 10 kills on that. 8 kills on that one. Gonna go over towards this bottom right-hand corner as well. There's so many vessels in this group. It's just gonna get all the irradiates off. And so many drones have fallen. 7 scourge sets of scourge on the way right now. The... Oh god, the eraser trick is just brutal. It's done so much damage. Oh my god, 12 kills on that one. 14 on this one. 14 on this one as well. Oh my goodness, finally we're gonna get some Scourge out. Scourge take a crazy amount of time to build when you really need them. 
when you're getting a racer tricked. Coming out with those ultras, that's quite a lot of marines. Doesn't have the dark swarm to deal with this, to contend with this big um, marine medic ball. There we go, dark swarm down now, so that medic is safe. Or well, that ultra is safe, excuse me. No medics are safe on this map right now. Ultras are pushing everything back. Ten more drones in production, but this is a huge hiccup for HJS. He was supposed to be producing a huge amount of ultras and taking the map at this point, but he really can't do that. He has to remake drones and resaturate these bases. Otherwise, he just won't be able to afford the minerals that it costs to build all of these ultras lings and defilers are going to cost a lot of money so he's going to slowly pull this together now that he's rebuilt those drones he can switch back into full army production but he's having a hard time getting something to actually consume here as this defiler ends up going down that one as well two defilers lost for nothing HGS is starting to fall apart a little bit. There's the vulture transition. Huge amount of vultures going to be coming out here soon. And a lot of battle cruisers as well making their way across the map. Going to be heading over towards this base. Start to hit these mineral patches very, very soon. Another base over here. Going to be held by H HJS for now. Mihu slowly pushing in towards that. Oh, great. Great mine there. Doing a lot of damage and picking off that first defiler. Meanwhile, oh, battle cruisers are going down. Two of them get uh, hit with some pretty solid connections. Able to take out uh, two of those. But is he going to have Dark Storm over here? He really needs it. Dark Storm on this position is so important to keep that base alive. Building a factory down here. Mihu really in control this game. But there are starting to be quite a few ultras coming out here. That is a lot. And there's not so much bio as there once was. This two health battle cruiser. Going to be taken out here in just a moment. But he's going to be replaced by more battle cruisers making their way over here soon. Ah, oh, that didn't kill. <laughs> Sent in two scourge, but it wasn't enough. Going to probably get this vessel. He's actually reset the vessel count pretty solidly. There's really not many vessels left anymore. Great surround with the medics. Preventing that ultra from running away. And these lings are going to make their way down to bottom left. However, there's pretty good defenses set up down there already. He probably won't be able to get in. He's looking for this base. I don't think he even knows about the base uh, on the high ground there. Which is pretty unfortunate. Oh boy, this is a big misclick from Mihu. I'm glad I caught that. Ouch. You can see that he had all of his army like spread out this way. He was thinking about going in for the attack. He changed his mind and maybe clicked out towards the middle of the map. And a bunch of the army went, decided to go this way towards the middle. That is a painful loss. So many Marines just went down there. But I think it's a drop in the bucket in compared to what uh, Mihu has on the field right now. However, this army making its way down to bottom left has a defiler in tow that is a really dangerous prospect he may be able to just get in here and actually kill this base and that would be catastrophic for me who, who's worked for a long time to get this set up and who has just barely started to get these tanks and vultures incrementing out he's just gonna lose a lot of this it would be really good to start consuming lings right about now Get ready for a big plague. Plague from behind. Plague from behind. Oh, man. HGS missing an opportunity there. A massive opportunity to potentially get a huge plague with that flanking defiler. But he is instead going to throw down some Dark Swarm here on top of all of this production. Eventually, the mines will be able to clear that along with an Irradiate. But more army is making its way down here. And HGS is kind of unleashed on the map. Oh, looks like I missed something over here. Maybe a run by, maybe a drop, something like that. That base is still alive, but some of the drones went down over there. Hmm, I'm not sure who's going to win this one. It's pretty neck and neck right now. 56 to 60 workers. It's a little bit rough. Vultures chasing things down over here. Killing some drones. 
Dark Storm getting thrown out. Protecting these Ultras, keeping them alive. Another base coming down at the bottom center. That's a little bit wild, trying to keep a hold of that base. Vessels over here. Kind of unprotected right now, but they will join the pack once again. And we're kind of feeding in with the Lings right now. We actually need to back up a little bit. Look for this plague. Oh, this could be a sick plague. HJS, come on, man. What are you watching right now? You could have gotten every single vessel with a single plague. It would have been insane. Coming forward with some Scourge. At least he'll get a couple of these. No, one. One only goes down there. That's a little bit rough. Bunch of SCVs coming down the bottom left. Tanks on the high ground. Now it's serious. Now it's like a, a kind of dangerous here for HJS. He may end up losing this game. With the tanks on the high ground, it's very hard to clear that out. To clear out bottom left. And since he has this position right here, basically, I think you have to just accept the fact that we're going to 40 minutes. Like 20 more minutes of gameplay at least if you want to win this game as HJS. It's just a fact of life. He has that corner. It means he's got two fresh bases. It's going to be so hard to break into that. You might as well just let it go. Take this base down here. Take this base over here. Get set for the extreme late game. And maybe a full mech transition. Single lurker on that high ground. Oh, these vultures are just crushing it. Killing so many drones. But 1,800 minerals in the bank means that HS can absolutely afford to reproduce those. Not a big deal at all for him. It's like the vessels are going to retreat to safety. Ultras over here. Not going to engage just yet. Oh, the... Oh, man. That's so painful. That defiler could have gotten a magnificent plague on this. But that one mine there absolutely wrecking that play. So he's going to try and burst up this ramp. Let's see if he can actually do it. Got a lurker here. And some ultras on the side. Tanks are now starting to push up. He's abandoning the high ground. He's actually trying to make a kill move happen. This is a double-edged sword. If he loses all of these tanks... Uh, here in a moment, then he could lose this game. Uh, if he were to just stay on the high ground, he would stand a much better chance of just holding on and winning in the late game, but he wants to gamble it on a win right here, right now. Can he actually break this? Looks like the tanks are going to be dived upon by these ultras, but there's not quite enough of them to break through the line. The tanks survive for the most part, and the high ground is about to be breached. Seems like Mihu will crack this position. Despite everything that HJS is trying to do to prevent that from happening. He gets on top of a lot of the tanks, though. He could at least reset the tank count, potentially. These Lings are really trying to hold the line, but the Marines are just too strong. They punch through. And it looks like HJS will have to give up this base, whether he likes it or not. He's going to have to give up that position, and Mihu has lost a good number of tanks. But he's still very high up on that supply. He's 60 supply ahead. He has a pretty reasonable tank number here. And he's just a knight of base. It's a great position to be in. I would say the gamble of bringing those tanks down the ramp and actually attacking uh, was definitely worthwhile in this case. Like I said, it can be a double-edged sword, but I think it's really paid off here for him. Losing this base that hardly has any minerals left at it. Not the biggest deal in the world. As long as he gets over here and shuts down one of these. If he gets in here, it's absolutely worth. But it feels like he won't be able to. Dark Swarm coming down at just the right time. Giving a plague on those retreating units as well. Ultra making their way into the natural. But ending up getting picked off here in the end. Mihu going to hold strong for now. This should get taken out. This uh, one defiler should be taken down. And we might have another eraser trick. Oh boy, another eraser trick here. Could this be the end? A lot of drones are going to fall. Once again, this is really important base for 
HJS. He's really struggling to find gas at this point. He's depleted here. This is almost depleted as well. Oh man, he's going right through the entirety of the base. He's gonna kill this base as well. Running up on the center right. If he kills this base, I think this game has gotta be over. Vessels over here are just chilling. We don't have enough Scourge and the base goes down. I think Mihu's done it. He's just barely managed to break HJS here. HJS was looking good. But he's been torn asunder. Definitely the the way that he blocked the drop earlier had me thinking he might be able to come out on the map and do very well, but he really struggled in defending this base down here. He ended up losing a lot of drones to the eraser trick of all things. Not even a drop, but eraser really taking the day for Mihu. Kind of winning off of those plays alone. Eraser, super clutch in this game specifically. It seems like Mihu really knows when to utilize that. He's very good at scanning ahead and finding out whether there's Scourge around in the area and when he has that opportunity to strike, getting in there and killing all the drones. We're going to jump into another game. Guys, it's all tied up. Mihu on the hill here. Has to take on Yoon in this final game of round number two to see if we will get an ace match or not. That's coming right up. Okay, the final match of round number two Yoon versus Mihu. Mihu gonna open up with an eight racks, gonna put on some pressure. Start this off with some action. Let's see if Yoon builds a spawning pool. Oh boy, he's gonna get one. That's big. That is really, really big. It's over pool. So it's not quite as quick as a nine pool. We might not see as many lings pop out, but having the over pool here means he is going to be much safer against this forward racks. Now, let's see if Mihu builds his second racks right there. We saw that previously. Um, Mihu, rather than floating his racks back, prefers to just keep building marines and then build the second racks here and float the first racks back into the ba main base when he needs to. And so, pressure is going to be applied, but very little I think will come from this. Yoon will start one pair of links. Will he start a second? Or will he go directly into drones? Second pair of links on the way. And this is basically held already. Two pairs of links and a drone. As long as you micro correctly, nothing will come from this. The SCV will come into the main. He sees the links popping out. He sees the spawning pool. And he just knows nothing can be done here. Going to go ahead and just lift and land back in this wall. Not too much was really lost here by Mew. He can just transfer this into a very normal game without putting any pressure on. Would much rather have, you know, the racks expand. It's a much better build um, economically. But, I mean, this is a fine way to, to transfer um, from the eight racks. Just throw down your CC. It's... Obviously, it's not as good. It's not as strong. Uh, you're a little bit economically weak. The Zerg player is also taking a hit, though, by building that earlier spawning pool. The overpool is not a typical build for ZVT, but it does counter the eight racks a little bit. It allows you to get those lings out just a slight bit faster and get rid of any sort of bunker rush. And so I think we're pretty much dead even here. If you went over pool into a one racks FE, you'd be in a bad position. If you went uh, eight racks into a nine pool, you'd be in a bad position. But here it's everything just kind of evens out. Five Marines are moving out on the map. Two Lings are maybe going to run by, try to pick off the next Marine that pops. It is out though and in that little gap. So it would be a little bit hard to kill that. Looks like he's going to go for it potentially. 
we get the kill on this okay he can get both uh links to attack so he's gonna get that kill the marines are gonna have to go all the way back home only two links had to be hatched but two more popped out back at home um oh there was what were a couple more around and a third base is gonna go up in the top left there's ling speed finishing off sling just gonna keep running around here and the worker uh balance here looking pretty good for you and you in a reasonable uh, position here We've got the SCV at the front. I really like that for Mihu. Oh, he kills? What's this building here? Academy. That's kind of huge. And he sees everything. He knows exactly what's coming here from Mihu. He knows it's going to be that quick plus one. That's very, very strong build. Likely a 4x follow-up from here as well. Doing a really good job keeping this Ling alive. Oh my god. It's still alive. That is crazy. When is this thing going to die? Got one kill on it. We'll look for more damage. Going after that SCV on the Academy once again, but does finally get picked off. That's fine though, because mutas are about to hatch. It's time to start that micro. Can't be doing both at the same time. Little bunker going up here at the front, helping to defend this supply depot. We don't have any turrets just yet, but they're starting to be added on in the main. There we go. Man, there's one on the high ground here. It's going to be covering the barracks. It's a little bit far from the barracks, but he really wants to cover this ramp area here. It seems more important to him than, you know, putting the turrets closer to the barracks, which is interesting. Muta's coming. And everything is prepared. Interesting turret back here as well. This is such a difficult area to push the mutas out of. So that does make sense. Putting a turret down like that, going to make it harder for them to just kind of hang out in this area. If they fly over this turret and try to uh, camp back here, you're going to have at least one turret to kind of help you push those out of that position. Now, Yoon going to swing around. He's up to that seven count. It's going to take at least three hits to kill these uh, turrets. So he actually it takes four and it picks off one SCV. This is not... The damage he's looking for just picking off one turret uh is not going to slow down mihu much he actually needs to get more and he has the number of mutas necessary to one shot scvs very easily now gonna get this one on the turret here below the mineral patches that's three now we need about five to make this really worth it four and five okay Five kills. Will we just back off from here? Yoon is going to fall back a little bit. Pull out some of these weakened mutilists and replace them with some stronger ones. Get ready for the move out that will inevit inevitably come here. Only a three racks play out of Mihu, which is interesting. Not committing all the way up to four racks. Has that plus one and range. About to finish. Nice job getting the supply depot here at the front. Yoon, very strong Zerg player, as you can see. Putting the pressure onto Mihu, and looks like he tried to build a Queen's Nest. It didn't start, though. That is unfortunate. There we go. Queen's Nest gets started now. I don't know how long that was delayed for, though. Looks kind of painful. The Queen's Nest actually takes longer than the Hydra Den. And, um, oh, he's just going to dive right in here. Okay. Killing off these turrets. Nothing popping out of the barracks right now. Nothing in production. And so Yun will actually move back to deal with this little marine medic ball in the middle. That's actually not that big of a me marine medic ball. It could be picked off pretty easily if Yun puts together some lings to go with these mutas as well. But Mihu moving back towards his main base. Oh, canceling a bunch of turrets here as Yoon comes back in to put on the pressure once again. Coming in to deal with some of these marine reinforcements. Moving up towards the middle of the map. Trying to put on pressure to force the mutas back. He does manage to make that happen. But he's really running low on the marines here. Everything going to be dived upon. And Yoon cleans up beautifully with his reinforcements. Coming in from that north side 
does he get turrets up in time? No. The turrets here from Mihu just a bit too slow. Not enough time bought by that force out on the map. And I think this is GG. Just taking over uh, these barracks completely. And although we have an armory coming and eventually there will be a Valkyrie. So much damage is going to happen in this main base. He's probably going to end up losing barracks. He's definitely going to lose that turret. No chance that that ends up staying. And just rallying links across the map should be a killing blow. But he's building Hydras as well. Hydras and Lurkers will be following this up. And GG is called. Mihu taken down by Yoon. Really impressively played here by Yoon. Absolute domination, actually. He did everything right from just the quick snipes in the... Uh, mineral line here picking off five workers opening up the position a little bit to killing this uh, supply depot and then getting rid of all the turrets here and dealing with this marine medic ball on the map everything went so smoothly for Yoon I don't know if they're going to send out Mihu for the ace match because this looked pretty one sided uh, team Korea going to win Round number two, and now we're all tied up. That ace match, who will they send out? Is it going to be Xiao Ge Ge? Are they going to send out one of their other players? Let's go ahead and find out. I mean, J-Star, I don't think, seemed up to the task. Maybe they send out Xiao Shuai? Xiao Shuai in a ZVZ finals? Uh, ace match? That's potentially possible. I think that might be uh, maybe their best hope. I don't know. CVZ is very volatile. And so we're going to jump into this last game. The final game of the night here, guys. It's all tied up. Let's go see who ends up taking this week. So Mihu not going to take another shot here at Yoon. Instead, we're going to have Xiao Gugu come out. PVZ for this ace match. And a nine pool has been thrown down by Yoon. He wants to get aggressive. I think this is just for the extra drone. And yeah, will be cancelled. He's going to pop that Overlord now. And potentially pop six Lings here as soon as this is ready. Probe is heading in his direction, so... He's going to get scouted right off the bat. But he is also going to find... Shagugo's base immediately with his overlord, which means his lings will know exactly where to go as soon as they pop out. And he could put on a lot of pressure here. Three sets of lings on the way, and it's just a gateway in the natural for Shagugo. Yun is going to try to kill that first zealot, maybe try to get up this ramp. I think we'll have to pull the first zealot over to the ramp. Just put a probe with that. And then the second zealot will have to be fighting in here with those six lings. He's actually going to throw down a forge right away. And try to hold this tight little location here. I'm not sure how that's going to go. This Yun's control is pretty deadly. Second Zealot is about to pop. You got to be very careful coming out with that Zealot. You don't want to get surrounded here. Poking out just slightly. Gonna we'll start the cannon here soon. Oh, you're looking to go around right now. Let's put a bit of damage on that gateway, but not a whole lot. Very careful right now. You have to be super careful as Shogu. If any of these links get in, you're really going to regret it. And 400 minerals in the bank. He hasn't thrown down the cannon yet. Oh, big surround here. Does manage to kill one Ling and back out. Not bad. Or Shogu. Another Zealot on the way as the Nexus starts. We should be starting a cannon here in a moment. Two zealots heading across the map. Put on some more pressure here to force out two more sets of lings. Not too bad for our Chinese Protoss player. He's going to put on... 
heaps of pressure. And yeah, he's really slowing down the droning. I don't know if he'll be able to get behind this mineral patch. If he does, that would be a very nice position. Okay, not bad. Not bad at all. Getting back there, he manages to get an extra kill. Doing his best here to not get surrounded. Lings are being forced to micro a whole lot so that he doesn't lose too much. Drones are now going to be produced. And Ling speed on the way. Two more zealots coming out. But didn't he just see that there was all these Lings here? You know, quite a few of them are damaged, so maybe he can take an okay fight. Another zealot coming out as the cannon is now done. Nexus here going to finish up. And he's going to force even more Lings out right now. 17 drones is all that Yuna's been able to put together. He wasn't able to do as much pressure as I would have expected. Pretty good control overall from Sh uh, Xiao Being chased back just a little bit. Taking some trades with these Lings. It's a little bit tough to get the max value out of these uh, Zealots when you don't have somewhere to tuck them in. But another Zealot's going to make its way over here towards the natural. Four more links pop out just in the nick of time. Perfect timing on those to just block this Zealot out. And you're not going to be able to get past this. With the speed, the links just trade way too well. And now he's got 11 links that could potentially come across this map. However, second Zealot here in the wall will pop. And he should just be able to hold position in here. It's a little bit unfortunate the number of zealots he's thrown away though. He threw away, I believe, six zealots already, which really limits his first push out. He's just not going to have as many zealots to move out with when he's ready with that plus one. He's actually not getting plus one. Wait a, wait a second. Is this the same build as we saw before? He's gone for that very quick citadel. No plus one attack. No plus one attack. Air or ground. Both being forgotten about here or just ignored. There's a very fast Templar Archives once again. This is the same build as we saw previously, but I, I just... I can't agree with it. I don't know what he's actually thinking with this. He's going to start the plus one now after the Templar Archives starts. Maybe we'll get a better view in this game of what Shaogaga is trying to do. This Corsair is not super fast. It's not particularly fast, right? We're nearly seven minutes in as he's looking for the first Overlord and the Spire is done. So it's, um, it's a little bit strange here. I'm a bit confused. The game plan of our Chinese Protoss player is adding on those gateways now. He's got the plus one coming. But we're going to have plus one started here in just a moment for Yoon. Yoon is going to be catching up in those upgrades really quick. There it is. It starts. Storm is started. Has started. And we should have Templar here soon. Popping out. Yeah, that first Templar is about to come. And no plus one air attack. So, oh gosh. Run by. Run by into the natural. Might get a cannon here. Probes are doing a pretty good job of surrounding though. One probe, two probe, three probes go down. Ah, a miss there at the end. That's unfortunate. That one Ling gonna run around and be annoying here for a moment. Okay, it does go down. No, it's right there. Cannon in the main is going to prevent that from doing anything else. Maybe it could try to kill this pylon or this probe. But aside from that, we're just going to have a little move out here with Zealots and man, there's, there's not a lot of Zealots here. This is such a small number. It's really going to be hard for him to fight. And Yoon's just blocking these Zealots, getting as many kills as he can. As the cannons are going up in the natural. We have Storm, so we shouldn't die. We absolutely should not die to this. It's like that Ling finally going to get picked off. There we go. Does go down. Storm is ready. Gonna come forward with that storm. Maybe cast on some of these hydras. He's ready to dodge. 
Okay, there's the dodge. Not bad. Zealot speed is done. Zealot speed is done. He's going to chase this down. And keeps his wall alive. That's pretty important. You don't want to be losing that plus one now. It's already been so heavily delayed by the build. If he loses the plus one... We could even just grab a second evolution chamber and start building armor and just stay ahead of stay ahead of the attack upgrade forever which would be disastrous for the protoss player you play the whole game and you never get an upgrade advantage at all you're always behind uh, your opponent that would be really really painful but um looks like he's going to chase down some of these hydras I just coming up from the flank. He's really trying to surround this and pick that off. Sell it. Going to make its way over here towards the natural. He wants a little run by here, but... Enough Hydras are out, and Yun has overload speed. So he's going to start to move forward. And... Okay, more Hydras going to come out. He's pulling everything back. Realizing that there's more of a threat here in the natural than this little threat of, of uh, Zealots moving around. The bottom side here nice job with the scourge just tracking these zealots endlessly making sure he knows exactly where they are and yun is starting to get big man he's got six hatch exactly 44 drones it's almost perfect 45 is the perfect amount of drones to have on three bases and he adds on a fourth so he's probably going to add a few more drones here you want like a you know 55 maybe 60 drones uh for those four bases but not really any more just like on three bases 45 is enough 55 is more than enough on uh, or 60 is more than enough on four bases to really start to pump out masses and masses of units i just heard a lift is going for a dt plus templar drop Headed out for the main here, but Yun is going to contain him. And if this drop doesn't go well, he could just completely stagnate in this game. Oh, the Scourge. Neither of them connect. That's ridiculous. Lurkers here doing their job. Keeping everything back. Oh, there's the drop. There's the DT. DT going to die immediately. Corsairs are going to start to go down as well. Here's that Templar coming in, but Scourge are ready. There's the drop. It goes down. Oh, man, that's really bad. He spent a lot of time and resources to get that Templar drop going and wanted to come in really early on and deal a bunch of damage, but in the end gets basically nothing out of that. He lost a shuttle. Zealot, Templar, and one Corsair as well. Plus, Yoon is able to set up this beautiful containment. He's going to spread Lurkers all the way around here. Um, more and more Lurkers are being added on. We actually have to produce Observers now, just purely. So after picking off the shuttle, you can be sure that there's not going to be another uh, shuttle out on the map for quite some time. And Yoon can just drone up a little bit get this get this going you know maybe five more drones saturate these patches or not saturate sorry just get one for each patch and then he should be good just to produce only units to defend this containment and as long as he prevents the containment uh from being broken and shaguga can never get out of this position he will win this game this is such a big a uh, concave of units here. Yun doing a really good job of juggling back and forth. Uh, army being sent in. It's so hard to dodge storms when you have this many hydras because you can't have everything on a hotkey. You're really having to box select or, you know, control select things over and over and over again uh, and pulling things back. Sometimes if you uh, box select something, you pull it back, but hydras are behind it. Uh, you can get completely blocked and killed. There's some good dodging once again. But also good storms to just respond immediately to the hydras running forward. Does he have storm for this? Really good dodges here from you and just preempting the storm. Moving forward and then moving back right as he knows that storm should come down. This is going very, very well for a Zerg player. 
and Shao Gaga is running out of steam here. He's putting on, you know, six more Dragoons and two Zealots every single round that these gateways are pumping, but he's losing more Dragoons than he can produce, and GG is called Yoon polishes off this series with a victory in the ace match giving another win to team korea man yoon sure looked deadly in this series i think he won all of his games let's see if did he lose any games no he didn't he only played one round or one game in round one it was against shaoguga on fighting spirit and he managed to win that. He only played one match in round two. That was against Mihu, which he won. And the final, the rematch against Shao Gugu. The ace match, he manages to get another win there. So carrying his team, Yoon, a very strong Zerg player. Will anyone be able to beat him? Are we going to have him in our next week of China versus Korea? The CKW. I can't wait to find out guys thank you so much for joining me in this tournament it's been a blast it's been pretty fun actually uh to see not absolute tip top level uh you know starcraft play i've actually been enjoying it quite a bit it's um maybe not the the optimal like a lot of players, a lot of people watching probably want to see, you know, ASL level play in every game they watch, but I'm actually I, I'm pretty happy with this. I feel like I'm seeing some of the more some of the mistakes and I'm recognizing some of the mistakes from my own play. I'm also seeing, you know, how these guys are overcoming some of those problems, those difficulties uh, in each of these matchups and Maybe I can learn a little bit more from players like this than I can from watching, you know, Soul Key just dominate or play like an absolute god. Seemingly without any difficulties or problems in his play at all. Seems like this is maybe more informative to me, but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. That's it for this week. I'll see you in the next one.